Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers? We have additional people on the floor, so if we have a lot more staff than anticipated, so if we could please not block the doors, exits, entrances, please stand clear of the doors. It would be appreciated. Madam Public Advocate. Everyone, please find a seat. Please find a seat. Please clear the aisles. Please close the doors. Quiet in the chambers. Everyone, please be seated. <clears throat> Quiet in the chambers. All members, please be seated. Quiet in the chambers, please. Maybe please close that back door. <clears throat> All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call. Quiet in the chambers, please. Adams. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Here. Cornegy. Here. Crowley. Here. Combo. Deutsch. Here. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Present. Ferreris Copeland. Garodnik. Here. Gentili. For the last time, here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet in the chambers, including myself. <laughs> Ferreris Copeland. Okay, got it. Okay, okay. We've got a long agenda. Quiet in the chambers. Gibson. How are you guys? I'm here. Greenfield. Here. Gradenchek. Here. Johnson. Here. Kalos. Shh. Yeah, here. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Lander. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Uh, here, can I explain my answer? No. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Continuing with roll call. Mealy. <laughs> Present. Menchaca. Presente. Mendez. Present. Miller. Miller. Palma. Oops. Here. Perkins. Here. Reynoso. Present. Richards. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Vaca. Here. Valone. Here. Williams. Here. Lander. Here. Matteo. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Speaker Mark Viverito. Here. Thank you. All quiet in the chambers, please. All rise for the invocation. <clears throat> 
The invocation will be delivered by Reverend Dr. T. Kenjitsu Nagagaki from the Buddhist Council of New York. Quiet in the chambers, please. As we celebrate the holiday seasons, let us keep holiday spirit of hope, wisdom, love, compassion, and peace in our mind. Hanukkah for Jews, Christ, uh, Christmas for Christians uh, celebrate uh, widely. Muslim friends celebrate the birthday of Prophet Muhammad on December 1st this year, and the Buddhists celebrate the day of Buddha's enlightenment on the December 8th. December is indeed a special month for many religions. As the New York City is filled with many lights in this season, which can represent a light of hope, a light of wisdom, a light of love, a light of compassion, and a light of peace. Each of us should nurture such lights within, which, which eventually brighten our city. Join me in meditation, so close your eyes and breathe in and out slowly and deeply using your lower stomach. As I offer the moment of silence, let us nurture the light of hope, light of wisdom, light of love and compassion, and light of peace within ourselves. And as I ring this bell, you turn on your mind lights. May these lights become the source of our wholesome action for the true benefit for New Yorkers. Peace and blessing to all of you, and uh, have a happy holidays. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. Quiet in the chambers. Quiet in the chambers. A motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. May we have quiet in the chambers, please. We are in session. I would urge everyone to take your conversations outside. Councilmember Gorodnik. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate, and good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome and extend my deepest gratitude to Reverend Dr. T. Kenjitsu Nakagaki for joining us today. Reverend Nakagaki is president of the Buddhist Council of New York, a 32-year-old organization whose mission is to foster dialogue, cooperation, and unity within the Buddhist community of our city. Reverend Nakagaki is not only a leader in his own community, he has also reached out across religious lines and has been a remarkable civic leader on behalf of all New Yorkers. Reverend Nakagaki is past vice chair of the Interfaith Center of New York and currently serves as the community clergy liaison for the New York City Police Department. 
Since 1994, he has organized an interfaith peace event to commemorate the Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bombings and previously organized the World Trade Center Memorial Floating Lantern Ceremony. As part of his research for his Doctor of Ministry program at the New York Theological Seminary, he visited Poland, touring the Auschwitz and Treblinka death camps. Reverend Nakagaki's actions from diving into interfaith work to strengthening his own spiritual community show New Yorkers concrete steps we all can take to make our city the best it can be. With leaders like Reverend Nakagaki, we have a shining example of what we can do to strengthen our beautiful mosaic of a city, and I'm so glad that he has joined us at our city council stated meeting today, our final one of the term. Uh, also, on a personal note, I just want to recognize, because you couldn't possibly avoid uh, noting it, the presence uh, of my family, uh, my, my wife, Zoe, uh, and my two sons, Asher, almost age seven, and Devin, who is age four, as well as my father, David Gorodnik, uh, and we're so glad that they are all able to be here uh, for this final meeting. And in this spirit, I would like to make a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you. So be it. We want to thank uh, Reverend Dr. T. Kenjitsu Nagagaki for that beautiful prayer. And we also want to welcome to the chambers Zoe, Asher, Devin, and Mr. Gorodnik. Welcome. Adoption of minutes. Council Member Torres. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of November 16, 2017 be adopted in as printed. Messages and papers from the mayor? None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? None. Quiet in the chambers. Quiet in the chambers, please. As we now hear from the speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate, and good afternoon. Buenas tardes to all my colleagues and everyone here in the chamber. As this legislative session draws to a close, I want to thank all of my colleagues for their invaluable support and friendship throughout all of these years. Under this council, we were able to pass a record of over 700 bills, and I'll speak a little bit more towards the end of speaker time. I also want to recognize um, the recent death of former assembly member and Manhattan representative Michael Brian Murtaugh, who passed away last week. Uh, we will all miss him and remember him fondly. And as we all saw yesterday, tragedy struck in Brooklyn. The Azan family had been celebrating Hanukkah when the unthinkable occurred and a menorah went on fire. The Azans lost their mother and three children. Our hearts go out to Yozi Azan and the entire Azan family during this very difficult time. And I would like to ask Council Member Heim Deutsch um, to say a few words. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, early yesterday morning, my district suffered the tragic loss of a mother, Aliza Azan, and her three young children in a house fire. Maisha was 11, Yitzi was seven, and Henrietta was only three years old. Their father, Yassi, heroically saved the lives of two of his teenage children, Shilat and Daniel. He made every effort to attempt to charge back into the burning home to rescue the others. The three are still in critical condition, receiving treatment for injuries sustained during the fire. Our community and our city has been stricken with grief at this horrific loss. Yesterday's event is a stark reminder of the importance of fire safety. Please remind your, constituent to be, your constituents to be extra careful with the candles and lights during the holiday season. Once again, I want to express my heartfelt condolences to the Zahn family and the entire community for this terrible loss. I ask you all to join me in praying for a full recovery of Yassi, Shilat, and Daniel. Thank you, Council Member Dorchin. Let's take a moment of silence for our fellow New Yorkers. Moment of silence, please. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you to my colleagues. Okay, and on a much lighter note, um, we are, this is something I did not know until we came in today. We want to congratulate our 
colleague, Council Member Antonio Reynoso and his wife. Uh, Everybody knows by now, yes, that uh, Antonio and his wife Ileana welcomed their first child, Alejandro, over the weekend. So uh, to Antonio and to Ileana, congratulations. Um, wow, really, really happy moment. So congratulations. Before we jump into the docket for today, I wanted just to mention that I'm really excited to announce that we are launching a new New York City Council legislative website located at laws.council.nyc.gov. New York City Council Matic allows the public to more efficiently search the council's legislative information and pulls its data directly from our legislative API. You can now sign up for notifications about specific issues, uh, notifications from individual members or meetings, and this new site is uh, iterative, which, iterative, which means that the council will continue to improve, uh, improve it based on f user feedback. So definitely we need people to give us feedback. I'm proud to say that in my tenure as speaker, we have transformed every single one of the council's digital assets. We have continued to focus on people over products, and this new tool aims to make it easier for everyday New Yorkers to access the council's legislative information. By adopting Councilmatic as an official government tool, we are continuing to demonstrate our commitment to transparency, access, and digital inclusion. I want to thank Council Members Kalos, Vaca, and Lander for their dedication to these issues, and to our partners David Moore of the Participatory Politics Foundation, Beta NYC, and DataMade for pushing this project forward. So then jumping right into the docket, the Council is going to vote on a number of land use items, including the development of all national black theater, uh, of the National Black Theater in Manhattan, the rezoning of 1965 Lafayette Avenue in the Bronx, and the self-storage text amendment uh, that applies to various districts throughout the city. I want to thank Arajaman uh, really much for his work on this. Next, the council will vote on legislation concerning runaway youth, introduction 1705A, sponsored by council member Rafael Salamanca, will require DHS and DYCD to create and maintain a process for conducting intake and assessments for any runaway or homeless youth who is seeking to enter a DHS shelter. Intro 1619A, sponsored by Council Member Corey Johnson, would require DYCD to provide a biannual report on the number of runaway youth and homeless youth who are not able to access runaway and homeless youth shelters. For staff, I want to thank Jeffrey Baker, Andrea Vasquez, Michael Benjamin, Jessica Ackerman, and Kiru uh, uh, Jihuru. Uh, though Kiru is no longer at the council, we want to acknowledge and thank him for his work. I hope I pronounced the last name correctly. Moving on, we will vote on a few transportation bills. Intro 1658, sponsored by Council Member Idalis Rodriguez, would require the Department of Transportation and the Parks Department to report annually on the number of bollards installed throughout the city. I want to thank on staff uh, Jeffrey Baker, Gafar Zaloff, Malak Nasseruddin, Jonathan Maserano, Emily Rooney, Terza Nasser, and Andrea Vasquez. Intro 1397A, sponsored by Council Member Steve Mario, would set out conditions which may apply when a permit is issued to cut open a street within five years or less after completion of a city capital construction project which required resurfacing or reconstruction of the street. On staff, I want to thank Jeffrey Baker, Balkis Mirig, Malak, Malak Nasseruddin, Jonathan Maserano, Emily Rooney, Teresa Nasser, and Andrea Vasquez. Next, the Council will vote on Intro 1466, sponsored by Majority Leader Jimmy Van Bramer, would require the Department of Parks and Rec to clean a playground equipment after the spraying of pesticides. Uh, with staff, I want to thank Jeffrey Baker, Chris Sartori, Patrick Mulvihill, Chima Obachair, and Kenneth Grace. Moving on, we're going to vote on a number of bills sponsored by Housing and Buildings Committee Chair Jamani Williams. Intro 1120A would require that the Department of Environmental Protection be notified whenever excavation or drilling to a depth greater than 50 feet is proposed in the Bronx or north of 135th Street in Manhattan or greater than 100 feet elsewhere in the city. And intro 1039A would require the Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development to report on the vacant buildings that may be suitable for the development of affordable housing. I want to thank on staff Jeffrey Baker, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, and Sarah Gastelum. And introduction 1269A, sponsored by Council Member Donovan Richards, which would require the Department of Housing and Buildings to enter into regulatory agreements with community land trusts. I want to thank Jeffrey Baker, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, and Sarah Gastelum. Next, council member will, uh, next, the council will vote on intro 1036A, sponsored by council member Idanis Rodriguez, which will require the Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development to conduct an analysis of vacant residential buildings and vacant lots. 
I thank Jeff Baker, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, and Sarah Gastelum. Also vote on intro 1015A, sponsored by Council Member Ben Kalos, which will require HPD to establish a housing portal. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, and Sarah Gastelum. In addition, we will be voting on legislation by the public advocate, Tish James, intro 1009A, would require HPD to create an online database for registered dwellings containing an owner's information. Again, uh, the same staff, Jeff Baker, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, and Sarah Gastelum. Moving on, the council will vote on intro 385C, sponsored by council member Rosie Mendez, which requires dwelling owners annually inspect units for indoor allergen hazards. Uh, also vote on bill sponsored by General Welfare Committee Chair Steve Levin. Intro 1739A would require HRA to issue an annual report on the number of individuals and the number of families who exit domestic violence emergency shelters. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Andrea Vasquez, Tonya Cyrus, Dohini Sampura, and Namira Nuzat. Intro 1714A requires educational continuity materials and information be provided to families with children applying for shelters. And intro 1577A would require the Mayor's Office of Operations to complete a study on client information management systems. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Amin Takilawan, Andrea Vasquez, Terza Nasser, Tanya Cyrus, and Namira Nuzat. Also, intro 855B, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos, would require the Mayor's Office of Operations to produce a study regarding the feasibility of notifying individuals who apply for public assistance about other assistance opportunities. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Andrea Vasquez, Tonya Cyrus, Dohini Sampura, uh, and Namira Nuzet. Also, intro 572A, sponsored by Council Member Liz Crowley, which would require Department of Homeless Services to post a daily report Monday through Friday on its website with information on the daily shelter census. Uh, same staff as before, Jeff Baker, Andrea Vasquez, Tonya Cyrus, Dohini Sampura, and Namira Nuzet. Council also vote on intro 1632A, sponsored by Council Member Dan Gorodnik, which would require that property owners post the information about a building's energy efficiency in a conspicuous place. I thank Jeff Baker, Megan Chen, Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson, and Jonathan Seltzer. Next, the Council will vote on a couple of bills, sponsored by Environmental Protection Chair Costa Constantinidis. Intro 54A would use the, um, the use of alternative fuels and alternative fuel technologies in the city ferry fleet. Um, it's going to log and register the use of alternative fuels. Jeff Baker, Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson, and Jonathan Seltzer. And intro 1629A would require Department of Buildings to submit proposed amendments to make the city's energy code match the model stretch energy code created by the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. Uh, I want to thank Jeff Baker, Megan Chen, Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson, and Jonathan Seltzer. We're also going to be voting on intro 1465A, sponsored by Councilmember Richie Torres, which would accelerate the timeline for such plants to shift from using higher grade fuel oil. Intro 978D, also sponsored by Councilmember Richie Torres, would establish minimum standards for carrying out mold assessment, mold abatement, and mold remediation for certain buildings. Uh, Jeff Baker, Samara Swanson, Nadia Johnson, and Jonathan Seltzer. Moving on, the council will vote on intro 717A, sponsored by council member Helen Rosenthal, which would require reporting on idling complaints and their dispositions. We're going to also vote on another bill, sponsored by council member Rosenthal, intro 880A, which would require a review of the use of the biodiesel fuel in school buses. Next, we're going to vote on intro 1653B, sponsored by council member Ben Kalos, which would require DEP to review responses to noise complaints. And also intro 1616A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, would re create a temporary task force to address re-entry issues that older adults face when returning from state prisons and local jails. I mean, I think Danny gave a very compelling case about a 65-year-old person been in jail 20 years. Imagine with, you know, having to try to reintegrate. How do you do that successfully if there's no assistance? So very important legislation. Thank you for that. Uh, also, intro 1185A, sponsored by Councilmember Heim Deutsch, would require DIFTA to regularly provide written materials from OEM to senior centers and NORCs on how to register with a utility company if you use life-sustaining medical equipment or are an individual for whom a disruption in electrical services would create a medical emergency. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Caitlin Fahey, Emily Rooney, Andrew Vasquez, Terza Nazar. 
In addition, the Council will vote on intro 1399A, sponsored by Councilmember Debbie Rose, which would protect employees who seek temporary changes to work schedules for personal events and certain other schedule changes. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Terza Nasser, Annie Decker, Matthew Carlin, uh, Alexis Wazenberg, Wanzenberg, and Kevin Katowski. Next, we vote on legislation sponsored by Councilmember Lori Cumbo, intro 1615A, would require SBS to develop and make available to all contracting agencies a subcontractor resource guide. Uh, Jeff Baker, Alex Polinoff, Nadia Johnson, and Alia Ali. Next, we're going to vote on intro 1486A, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos, which would require the DOE to report the number of students who applied to, received an offer of admission for, and enrolled in schools in grades pre-K, kindergarten, 6, and 9, in schools in each community school district, as well as the anticipated number of school seats available in each school. Uh, Jeffrey Baker, Smita Deshmukh, Andrea Vasquez, and Terza Nazar. Thanks for working on those bills. The Council will also vote on intro 1497A, sponsored by Council Member Rafael Salamanca, which would require DOE to publish an annual report on students in temporary housing. The Council will then vote on intro 1604A, sponsored by Council Member Rosie Mendez, which would require the Mayor's Office of Operations or other agency designated by the Mayor to review the official forms of certain designated city agencies to determine whether they are eligible for updating, to be updated to include voluntary questions regarding individuals' gender pronouns, and if so, eligible to update such forms. Intro 804A, sponsored by Council Member Inez Barron, who would require reasonable accommodations for individuals with disabilities under the New York City Human Rights Law. Uh, Jeff Baker, Z. Emanuel Hailu, Annie Decker, and Rachel Cordero. I'm proud to discuss the final bills of which I sponsored. Intro 1499A would require the Commissioner of Sanitation and the DCA to study the feasibility of a penalty mitigation program. Uh, Jeff Baker, Sylvester Yavana, Nicole Bean, Jennifer Wilcox, Megan Chen, Michael Kurtz, Terza Nasser, and Andrew Vasquez. Thank you. Uh, intro 1419A would allow the city to recover penalties for construction site safety violations that result in or are accompanied by death or serious physical injury. And intro 1012A would amend the New York City Human Rights Law to improve its organizational structure and enhance its clarity. Uh, Jeff Baker, Eddie Decker, Michelle Lee, Juanita John, Z. Emanuel Hailu, and Malak Nazaruddin. And finally, the Council will vote on what is commonly known as the Right to Know Act. Introduction 182D, sponsored by Council Member Richie Torres, would require that all sworn police officers employed by the NYPD offer a business card to an individual during certain police interactions and give reason for the law enforcement activity. Intro 541C, sponsored by Council Member Reynoso, would require the NYPD to develop and provide guidance to its officers with respect to obtaining voluntary, knowing, and intelligent consent prior to conducting a search that is based solely on an individual's consent. I want to thank Deepa Ambakar, Casey Addison, Steve Reister, uh, so many people that worked on this. Uh, really appreciate it. And that completes the highlights of the docket. So again, just reiterating, as we all know, today is the last stated of 2017 and my final stated as Speaker of the New York City Council. Twelve years ago when I was first sworn in as the first Latina, the first Puerto Rican to represent my district of El Barrio, East Harlem, and the Bronx, I tried to process what that all meant. I was a labor organizer, a community activist of Mujer del Barrio, not a politician. But I knew as a council member I had a real chance to be a voice for all those in our city. For, um, who too, for too long have been cast aside and silenced. The poor, the undocumented, nuestros viejitos, and every single New Yorker who felt that there was more to be done to make our great city more responsive, fair, and just for our people. Above all else, justice has been the driving force behind every significant step or decision I've made as a council member and as speaker. And it's that quest for justice that has driven this council to act as it never has before. We provided free legal services to those who would otherwise not have representation in immigration court. We invested in our youth, our immigrant communities, and all vulnerable New Yorkers. And not only did we kick ICE off Rikers Island, we got the mayor to agree to close it. That is the legacy I am proud and I'm hope, uh, to leave behind. And by, now, every, by now everyone knows who I am and where I came from, and I can't say enough about how incredibly honored and grateful I am so I've had the privilege to lead this body. All of our success could not have been done without your support. I am uh, a defender of this institution. I understand its value. I believe in its value. 
uh, and in, this, in governing the city of New York. You all understand that as well. Uh, I've defended members and stood, stood up against criticism for that. Um, and I will continue to do that. So I've been honored and grateful and the privilege to lead this body. I'm really incredible that uh, coming here at the age of 18, uh, really not having any networks in this city, not really understanding how the city worked or how it was governed, that I've been able through hard work and commitment, been able to arrive at this position is definitely truly uh, what many come and strive to this country for. And I'm really proud of that. And so that's who we are, that is who I am. And because this legislative body would be nothing without all of you who have been at my side for eight and now 12 years. We turned a speaker-driven institution into one where members have had a real say in things. Even when we didn't always agree, we always listened. Visiting our communities, visiting your communities, meeting your constituents, and learning about the challenges facing your districts has made me a better person and a more compassionate legislator. So for that, I want to thank each and every one of you. To my colleagues, to the staff, and to all those who held us accountable by testifying at hearings, tweeting complaints, or rally on the steps of City Hall, um, I thank you. And uh, I thank my colleagues, but obviously the staff of this institution is incredibly professional. You have made us proud. Um, and we definitely want to salute each and every one of you. Uh, I think we can all say, right, that we thank the staff for all the work that they've done in this session. You know, I could go on and on, you know, I'm talking about that, but look, I obviously um, am, am supported by a very strong uh, team. I, I deeply, deeply appreciate everyone in the Speaker's office, all of our division heads um, who have demonstrated incredible, uh, incredible um, leadership in your own right. Latanya coming in to being the finance director, right? Uh, having. <laughs> You know, having uh, Camille in our administrative division, having Robin in our communications division, uh, having Erica uh, in, in uh, the division that she leads, and having obviously Ramon and Joey and Joe. Um, they've, all, they've all seen uh, my growth in many ways as well, and, and I, I'm really, uh, proud to have worked alongside each and every one of you. So I don't, people ask me, what are your regrets? I don't have regrets because we have to use every opportunity as a growing experience. And maybe you're not 100% thrilled, you're not 100% happy uh, with a particular issue, but those are learning oppor opportunities. And this has been the most productive legislative session, and we should all be proud of that because we're making this city a better city for all New Yorkers, for every single New Yorker who oftentimes feels invisible or feels um, disrespected or, uh, or disenfranchised. That is not who we are as a city. And so our work has been to really uh, make it a more equitable city. And, uh, and, and we've done incredible amount of work in four years. So thank you for your partnership and to all of those that are leaving office as well, term limited. Um, we'll all be civilians as, a, as January 1st and excited about the new, that new life and the opportunities that it will bring. So um, thank you all very much. This place, this city hall, uh, would be nothing without each and every one of you. So thank you so much.
<laughs> Thank you, Lemon. Um, so I, I didn't I didn't write my last comments down. So no, obviously I was whole. Got to make sure that we. Uh, Laura Popa, where are you, Laura? Oh, right here. With, uh, and Rob Newman and everybody else that this incredible number of bills that we have passed. Oh my God, it's just incredible. So you guys have been the driving force behind all of that and Jeff Baker and everyone else. So I could name names, but you all have been deeply important to me personally. Uh, and, and this is just a, a dream job and a dream opportunity. And I look forward to exploring uh, other opportunities in the future as well. So with that, I will uh, end communication from the speaker. The last communication from the speaker. Discussion of general orders beginning with Council Member Torres. Can you switch seats? Yeah, thank you. Divine intervention. Uh, <laughs> I want to. First, I'm, in, I'm internally grateful for the speaker. You know, this has been the most challenging week of my political life, and you have stood with me unwaveringly at every turn. And so, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you. I love you, uh, and it's been an honor to serve under your leadership. I, I am the youngest elected official in New York City. The humiliation of a street encounter is no abstraction to me. It is a pain that I have felt deeply and repeatedly in my own life. I know from my own lived experience, as well as from years of negotiation, that intro 182 will improve the kind of street level policing that I painfully experienced as an adolescent and as an adult. Intro 182 is the most comprehensive police reform that the City Council has ever undertaken. Never before has the City Council set standards of accountability and transparency aimed at improving the everyday street encounters between police and civilians. Intro 182, once enacted, will require every single officer to have a business card. The business cards will include the name, rank, shield number, and command of the officer. It will include the number to 311, where a civilian can go to express concerns, compliments, or complaints about the conduct of an officer. It will include the website where a civilian can go to request video footage of the street encounter. Every officer will be required to provide a business card upon request in every single interaction. Every officer will be required to provide a business card proactively, regardless of request, in every level two, level three, and level four interaction. Level two interactions consist of investigatory questioning based on a suspicion of criminal activity. Level three interactions consist of stop, question, and frisk. Level four interactions consist of searches as well as arrest. These are the most intensive and intrusive interactions that have been the subject of most civilian complaints. Asking for an ID card in the midst of an escalating encounter runs the risk of deepening tensions. The point of Intro 82 is to demand proactive identification as a means of de-escalating the very street encounters that do escalate. When a street encounter escalates to the level of accusatory questioning, or escalates to the level of stop, question, and frisk, or escalates to the level of a search, that encounter immediately will become subject to a proactive 
ID requirement. Intro 182 proactively de-escalates that which escalates. The historical context here is worth considering. The Right to Know Act was originally part of the Community Safety Act, which emerged against the backdrop of stop and frisk policing. At the height of stop and frisk policing, there were 700,000 stops in the city of New York. If Intro 182 had been the law back in 2011, every single one of those 700,000 stops would have been subject to the proactive ID requirement. By way of further illustration, compare Intro 182 to the famous federal court decision in Floyd versus New York City. In Floyd, the federal court required the NYPD to provide tear-offs for level three encounters. By contrast, Intro 182 will require the NYPD to provide pre-printed cards, which are more reliable than handwritten tear-offs, and it will require those pre-printed cards to be distributed not only at level three, but level two, level three, and level four interactions. Or compare Intro 182 to the Community Safety Act. The Community Safety Act established an office, which is something the council has done before. It created a private right of action in court, which is something the council has done before. By contrast, Intro 182 regulates the day-to-day -day street encounters between police and civilians, which is something the council has never done. It is historic. It is unprecedented. It is real reform in the truest sense of the word. Or compare Intro 182 to Intro 541. Intro 541 only applies to consent searches, which makes up a narrow subset of enforcement actions. By contrast, Intro 182 affects every single police-civilian interaction, and it has the greatest de-escalating effect on the very police-civilian interactions that end up escalating. There are those who might be wondering why I've chosen to proceed with a compromise. Why did I not discharge? Or why did I not delay the bill into the next legislative session? Here is the reason I chose compromise. Progress in the present does not foreclose the possibility of even more progress in the future. If there are imperfections in Intro 182, there is nothing in the compromise that prevents a new council member from introducing a new bill aimed at correcting those very imperfections. Progress is a floor, not a ceiling. It is a foundation on which to build deeper reforms in the future. Here's the reason I decided against delaying Intro 182. Young people of color who live the reality of street encounters every day cannot afford to wait. The young people of color I know cannot afford to be delayed by the purity of politicians and advocates who can afford to wait. We owe it to those young people to forge ahead in a progressive but pragmatic spirit that recognize what Dr. Martin Luther King calls the fierce urgency of now. The next city council will likely be more conservative than the present one. The political landscape will likely be more hostile to police reform. I have concluded in good faith, it is better to legislate as much progress as we can in the immediate term than to let police reform languish at the mercy of a more conservative city council. Here is the reason I decided against discharging Intro 182. If we had gone forward with a discharge over the vehement objections of the administration, the mayor would have refused to implement the law, which is his legal right. The NYPD would have sued us. We would have embroiled ourselves in years of litigation. And since we are admittedly legislating in uncharted territory, there is a real risk that a court would have struck down these laws. I have concluded, in good faith, it is better to guarantee progress in the immediate term than to risk emerging empty-handed in the long run. And finally, here is the reason I chose cooperation rather than confrontation with the NYPD. 
Real reform not only requires a change in law, it requires a deeper change in culture. A culture shift is most successful when it commands the buy-in and the cooperation of the very institution whose culture you seek to change. We all have searing memories of 2014, when an open revolt broke out in the rank and file of the police department. If we can pursue a path to police reform without provoking an upheaval in the NYPD, then why not do so? Why not pursue police reform zealously, but responsibly? The reality of the city council is that we can only change the status quo at a rate that the system can absorb. And the reality is that we as council members cannot implement our own laws. We are inevitably dependent on agencies like the NYPD for the implementation of our laws, and that inevitable dependency demands compromise and cooperation. The need for a deep change in culture rather than a surface change in law demands compromise and cooperation. Traffic stops. Here is the risk of covering traffic stops. With the Criminal Justice Reform Act, we have been moving the city in the direction of fewer arrests and fewer summonses, fewer coercive interactions between police and civilians. When it comes to traffic violations, officers often have the discretion to issue warnings in the place of summonses. If you require officers conducting traffic stops to proactively provide a business card that contains a number that you can call to complain about them, the PBA will likely direct their officers to issue formal summonses instead of informal warnings in order to main an official, maintain an official paper trail that protects them from litigation. And so I had to ask myself a hard question as a legislator. Should I do what the advocates have demanded of me and derail a hard-fought and historic compromise over something that could have the unintended effect of generating hundreds of thousands of summonses in New York City? I concluded the answer should be no. Even though a few, about a year ago, I stood firmly and forcefully in opposition to the administrative agreement that the speaker negotiated. I've come to realize the wisdom of the speaker's long game. She has taken an approach that, in the words of Theodore Roosevelt, speaks quietly but carries a big stick, an approach that eases the NYPD, an entrenched institution if there ever was one, into an ever greater acceptance of reform. The city is better and fairer because of the speaker's patient but persistent advocacy. And when the speaker brokered the administrative agreement, there were those who predicted at the time that proceeding with the agreement would make it harder to pass the Right to Know Act. But experience tells us that this simply has not been so. The administrative agreement made it easier to pass the Right to Know Act. And passing the Right to Know Act, even in the present form, will make it easier to progress even further in the future. I will end on, on these final notes. Advocates for police reform have every right to expect a seat at the table. Advocates have every right to make their voices heard even loudly and vitriolically. But no advocate should ever have veto power over the legislative agenda of the New York City Council. And like the speaker, I too have no regrets. I stand by what I've chosen to do, even if it means standing alone, even if it means straining and severing political relationships, even if it means I'm no longer beloved in progressive circles, even if it means I have no future in progressive politics. I remain convinced, as I have ever been, that I'm doing the right thing and moving the ball forward, and I am at peace with the path that I have chosen. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Quiet in the chambers, please. Quiet in the chambers.
Council Member Reynoso. Hello. <laughs> try, try to follow that up. Uh, well, mine is going to be a lot shorter and sweeter because I actually want to get out of here um, <laughs> as soon as possible so I can be with my newborn son. Um, so before I begin, I want to personally recognize Laura Popa and Deepa Ambakar for their hard work that they put together to have these two bills uh, move forward here in the City Council. I also want to thank Ramon Martinez and Speaker Melissa Margarito, who were always, always had my back uh, when I was fighting against the administration to make sure that these bills happen. I also want to thank uh, our speaker for the great work that she's done over the last four years. Um, it, it truly is a, a, a model and a lesson to leadership, um, how she conducted herself and how she has pushed us forward um, in what I consider the most progressive uh, council in the history of all councils, which is not too long, but still important. I also want to give a farewell to all my outgoing colleagues. Um, we love you very much. Um, this council has been an amazing place, and your leadership and your wisdom has been extremely helpful. Um, working with all of you in my first term has uh, at times been challenging, but always a rewarding experience. I wish you all the absolute best in your future endeavors. The road to bring the Right to Know Act to a vote has not been easy. Since being introduced in 2014, we have faced multiple roadblocks and challenges. However, we have persevered and pushed police reform to bring about true justice. Intro 541 will increase transparency and accountability regarding unconstitutional searches or ones that have no legal basis. It will require consent to search during non-emergency encounters. New Yorkers are often unaware that they have the right to refuse a search when an officer does not have legal justification for it. And even if they do know their rights, they can often be uncomfortable or prohibited from exercising it because of fear of escalation by the officer. There is a power imbalance when you are being asked to empty out your pockets by someone with a gun. However, by increasing NYPD accountability and transparency, we can build trust between communities and the NYPD. For communities of color that are disproportionately affected by increased policing, this bill empowers us, it protects us, and prevents discriminatory-based interactions with the police department. We have to defend ourselves against an administration and their attacks on, immigration, on immigrant communities. We're often the target of abusive policing. As local officials, we must enact reforms at the local level like this that help reduce unnecessary and abusive police interactions every day. This is what it means to be a true sanctuary city. I want to thank the speaker and her legislative team as well as the mayor and his team for their support in the last two months to get this bill over the finish line. I would like to thank the Progressive Caucus and their director, Zara Nasir, for her, their early support of the bill, as well as Council Members Williams and Lander, who in 2013 set the bar with the Community Safety Act. I want to thank my staff and my former legislative director, Lacey Tauber, who left my office just last week. Her work on this bill was instrumental. I would also like to recognize all of my council colleagues who co-sponsored this bill to advance social justice in the city of New York as well as Richie Torres, my partner in crime, no pun intended, for his, <coughs> we're not real criminals, um, for his partnership in this process. Finally, I must recognize Communities United for Police Reform and its members and partners in 200 plus organizations in the Right to Know Act Coalition. Uh, I'll be as quick as possible here, it's not 200. Make the Road New York, Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, Picture the Homeless, New York Civil Liberties Union, Legal Aid Society, Justice Committee, um, J. Fredge, Moms Rising, Bronx Defenders, African American Association for New York, Brooklyn Movement Center, Center for Popular Democracy, um, Drug Policy Association, Girls for Gender Equity, Fierce, Latino Justice, Pro Def, NAACP, Legal Defense Fund, um, New York City Anti-Violence Project, uh, Rockaway Youth Task Force, Vocal New York, National Action Network, Justice League, New York State Conference of NAACP, Color of Change, New York Communities for Change, CAAAV, Organizing Asian Communities, Youth Represent, The Closed Rikers Campaign, 32BJ, 1199, New York Workings Families Party, Faith in New York, and many other organizations. And to all the families of those who have lost loved ones unjustly, unjustly in police incidents who have been fighting for the Right to Know Act. Some who are here in chambers for the vote today including the families of Eric Garner, Delron Small, John Collado, Chantel Davis, Anthony Baez, Anthony Rosario, Hilton Vega, 
Amadou Diallo, or Marley Graham, Akai Gurley, Sean Bell, Yang Sing Huang, Kimani Gray, Mohamed Ba, Kenny Lazo, Jason Tirado, and Rio Oyamara. I am proud of this bill. As a father who has welcomed my son to this world just four days ago, I cannot tell you how much this bill personally means to me, the work that I do, and the district I represent. So I want to thank you all and encourage you to vote aye on all. Thank you. Alejandro would be proud. <laughs> Councilmember Deutsch. Uh, thank you. Uh, today we are voting on intro 1185, my bill to require the Department for the Aging to conduct outreach in multiple languages to educate seniors who rely on life-sustaining equipment about how, to, how important it is to register the home address with their utility company. This information will be posted on the Department of Aging's website, on DIFTA's website, as well as shared with senior centers in Norks throughout the city. Having the home address registered ensures that, in the event of a power outage, emergency services are immediately aware of homes that may require a generator or transportation to a medical facility. The utility company will also prioritize these homes for repair. For example, when phone lines were down after Hurricane Sandy, many were trapped in the homes without any means of alerting first responders to their location. Those who relied on medical equipment to help them breathe were in particular danger. This would not be the case if these older adults were registered with their utility companies. The more you know, the better off you are, and I urge my colleagues to vote in support of Intro 1185, a bill that can truly save lives. I want to thank uh, Caitlin Fay and Emily Rooney for their work on this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. Council, Council Member Gorodnik. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I, I want to ask my colleagues to support intro 1632A, which is a bill that would require large buildings to post their energy efficiency scores and associated grades near their public entrances. New York's buildings account for two-thirds of the energy that our city consumes and are our biggest contributors to global warming. Since we passed local, 80, local law 84 in 2009, a law that I'm proud to have authored, New York City buildings over a certain size have been required to annually measure their energy and water consumption in a process called benchmarking. The law standardized this process by requiring building owners to enter their annual energy and water use in the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's online tool, Energy Star Portfolio Manager, and to use the tool to submit data to the city. The scores generated by this tool indicate how efficient a building is relative to comparable buildings. Originally, the requirement applied only to buildings over 50,000 square feet, and we broadened it to include those over 25,000 square feet. With intro 1632A, we are taking the next step. Going forward, buildings will be assigned a letter grade based on their energy score, and will be required to post that grade along with the energy score in a conspicuous location near their public entrances. This will make information about building energy use easily available to tenants and visitors, including prospective tenants and building purchasers and presented in the easily understood form of a grade. This transparency initiative will promote interest in and better understanding of energy use by our city's buildings. Tenants and buyers who value energy efficiency will push building owners to improve. They will reap the financial benefits and all of us will reap the environmental benefits. I'm pleased to help New York move toward a more sustainable future and I hope you will all join me in supporting this legislation. Madam Public Advocate, I see I have nine seconds and perhaps I'm the first on a clock today, but I just want to take a point of personal privilege for my final meeting. It will take about 30 seconds. Yes. I just wanted to say thank you to uh, my constituents for the opportunity to have served in this city council over the past 12 years. It has been a tremendous honor for me to represent the community where I was born and raised. And Madam Speaker, to you and to all of my colleagues, thank you for your years of friendship and collaboration. I have truly enjoyed it. I have learned from all of you. And I know that there will be many opportunities for further collaboration, and I look forward to that. To my staff, some of whom were here and some of whom who have moved on to other things, I thank you for being just so good at what you do. I am eternally grateful for your time and personal sacrifices. I expect great things of all of you, and I am here to support you in whatever you need. And of course, to my family, my wife Zoe, my dad David Gorodnik, my two boys Asher and Devin, I love you all very much and I'm so happy to be on this journey with you. And I also want to mention my mom, Barbara. 
who was here on my first day 12 years ago, but passed away uh, nearly four years ago. Mom, I miss you every day, and I know that you are watching over all of us. So on the occasion of this final meeting, again, please do accept my thanks and appreciation, and also please do join me in voting for intro 1632. <laughs> May your mother rest in peace, and Mr. Gorodnik Sr., you should be very proud of your son. Councilmember Kalos. Residents call my office every day seeking affordable housing. Thanks to a hero whistleblower at Department of Housing Preservation and Development, Stephen Werner, we learned through ProPublica that at least 50,000 units of affordable housing were not being registered with the state, which meant landlords receiving an estimated $100 million in taxpayer dollars might not be offering the affordable housing they promised. Introduction 1015A requires all new and existing city-subsidized affordable housing to register annually or face escalating fines, offer new and for the first time existing units through Housing Connect, and provides transparency around these affordable housing units and who manages them. Thank you to ProPublica, whistleblower and HPD analyst Stephen Warner, OSA President Robert Cron for protecting his members' whistleblower rights, housing chair and co-sponsor Jumani Williams and Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, Jeff Baker, Ed Akin, and Megan Chen for very tough but successful negotiations. New York City may be the city that never sleeps, but that shouldn't be because of after-hours construction noise waking you up. Noise is a top complaint in New York City with booming construction surrounding residents who complain only to see their concerns go unaddressed for days or met with a small fine paid by developers as a cost of doing business. After hours noise will be targeted by introduction 1653B with new rules for responding when noise is still happening or likely to happen again. Turning down the volume on after hours construction noise in residential neighborhoods over the next two years and empowering the Department of Environmental Protection to shut down equipment that's too loud. Thank you to the Department of Environmental Protection Commissioner Vincent Sapienza for his agency's partnership, Environmental Committee Chair Casa Constanides for his co-sponsorship and support, and Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for standing up for residents, and Jen Wilcox and Samara Swanson for their hard work drafting and negotiating this legislation. Please also vote for introduction 855B and uh, the school tracking legislation. Thank you. Council Member Richards. I uh, want to talk on uh, community land trust. Today we uh, take a critical step toward uh, taking power away from speculators and giving land back to local communities and nonprofits that serve them. Intro 1269 will not only define community land trust for the first time in New York City law, but it would also require that the community land trust enters into a 99-year ground lease agreement ensuring land will remain affordable for generations. In order to fully grow and flourish as a city, we need to not only build affordable housing, but we must also increase opportunities for affordable home ownership. I'd like to thank our speaker, Jen Wilcox and Megan Chen, and uh, the New York City Community Land Initiative, and my legislative director, Jordan Gibbons, and Matt Dan Danbar as, as well. I'm going to take the uh, liberty of speaking on Intro 182. Uh, first off, I would like to commend Council Members Reynoso and Torres for their courageousness in taking up these bills known as the Right to Know Act. I must admit, over the last few days, I've struggled on the ID bill, Intro 182, because I'm one who truly believes that we must not let perfect be the enemy of good. But in this circumstance, my own personal interactions as a young black man, and even as a council member, with DWB, driving while black, and stop and frisk, has me concerned that this compromise won't lead to addressing the underlying causes that have sown mistrust between communities and the police department. Let's be clear, the most common interactions between police and my constituents are level one in traffic stops whether the data shows it or not. And while I applaud all the stakeholders who've put in countless hours to arrive at this compromise, as a father of a two-year-old black boy who will one day encounter a level one stop, I cannot support this bill in its current form. If you can give me a few more minutes, uh, Madam Speaker. You know, when I was uh, Madam Public Advocate, 
when I, when I was elected in 2013, there was a mother who called my office because her 12-year-old son, I'm going to speed it up. If you could uh, bring your comments to a close, we would appreciate and, that. And his experience being stop and frisk coming out of a vehicle forced me to, Council to member, I not apologize. compromise on this issue today. Council member, I apologize. I'm going to, I'm going to shut up. Out of order at this but, point. But this bill does not resolve the issue. We, we have a long way to go in the city. Thank and you, level Council ones member. are still uh, the interaction most common in our communities. Thank you. Council we're member, not, we're, not that, I, to, I vote, we're not going to. I vote no we, on. Uh, you're issue. not voting yet. Oh, we're not voting. Okay. But we are going to uh, stick to the two minute clock here. You obviously have an opportunity when you vote to speak again. I would ask. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Williams. Thank you, uh, Madam Public Advocate. My comments are with all due respect to uh, Councilman Reynoso and Councilman Torres, who have been countless hours in here. They are not in opposition to the sincerity that uh, Council Member Torres spoke. Uh, I will not be a part of any uh, tactics that uh, attack him personally. I believe that he actually is sincere in what he is saying and believes is the right thing to do, and I want to respect that. Uh, a few years ago, the four bills of the Community Safety Act would have been here, and there was a precedent set of us taking two of those bills and laying them aside simply because we thought it had not gone far enough, and that is what we were asking for to happen here. Just to dispel a few myths, the advocates are not asking for 100%. The people who are voting no are not asking for 100%. This is not about compromise. Uh, this is about compromise that is worth it. Uh, we should not let the perfect be the enemy of the good, but we should not let the good be the enemy of what's necessary when we have the ability to do it. Case in point, three of the bills have passed. One of them will pass today. It is not what all the advocates wanted, but it is a compromise that met the threshold of the capital politically that was put in already uh, and the difficult discussion that we have to have going forward. Uh, intro 119 is a bill I passed that the advocates did not agree with. Uh, just for an example, if a police officer asked me for my ID uh, and asked where I am going, that is not an investigatory, that, I'm sorry, that is not a criminal stop and my ID, will, they will not give me a card under this bill. That is a majority of stops that are included. The fact that traffic stops are not included means also that the majority of stops are not included in this bill. What was asked for was investigatory uh, stops to be included. It is correct that uh, any of the bill, we could have taken away level two stops. It still uh, would have moved the ball forward, but not enough to pass the bill. Now, amending a bill is not as easy as folks are making it seem. Uh, it's been four years since we passed those bills. We waited for the last possible moment for a zero-sum gain. Madam Public Advocate, because others were given more time, I'm asking for an additional minute. I'm we're not going to We're not going to entertain I'm going that. I have, to take the, I have a the benefit. I, I asked, and I gave both sponsors of the bill extra time. People have time when they vote to again discuss this issue. I'm going to ask that we maintain the two minute here in general orders. So why general discussion, when you vote, you can feel free to. The sponsors of the bill had the ability to have we more didn't time. Make that a rule. I'm going to ask it's everyone else to maintain the two minutes. I'm asking thank for an additional minute. Thank you. I'm, I'm saying, saying no. All right, I'm, going to I'm saying talking. no. I appreciate I'm it. Thank you. Keep talking, then. We're going to uh, amending a bill is a very we're going to move on to do we're going to move on here and so the best we're going to move on to the we ask forward. that you please cut off Williams, the mic. You're out of advocate, order. the advocates got us here Mendez. Uh, the, the advocates have got us here uh, and many of us in leadership have gotten here we're going to move on thank you council member Mendez please all right if council member Mendez doesn't want to speak who's the next on the list Count. Oh, who's the next? Well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna cede my time to Councilmember Williams, and I'll speak about my bills later. <laughs> Councilmember Mendez, the rules do not allow that. Councilmember Rose. Um, you know, I'm I'm term limited, so I just asking. This is my last state. I'm asking for a little discretion. So Council okay, I'll, okay, I'll 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 speak. I was going to speak about 385, and I really do need to do that because, you know, it has been more than 10 years that we've worked on this bill. Um, and uh, today, uh, we will be codifying mold abatement and integrated pest management after 10 years of diligently working on this issue with, with the advocates. Um, the Asthma-Free Homes Act, also known as Intro 385C. 
Um, after much negotiations, we are passing this crucial bill that will go a long way to eradicating mold, taking preventative measures to address mold and asthma triggers, and uh, asthma has a debilitating effect on an individual's quality of life. And here in New York City, there are approximately one million individuals who have been diagnosed with asthma. This legislation will go a long way to benefit tenants and their health. Um, and it will allow the city to recapture funds that they may expend through emergency repair program. Um, there is a portion of the bill that, that's the physician referral. I uh, refer to this as the Hurley provision. Dr. Matthews Hurley was part of our Coalition for Asthma-Free Housing. He passed away December 9th, 2016, and we fought hard to keep that provision in um, because of him. And um, there are 30 members of the coalition, so I can't mention all their names, uh, but I want to give a special thank you to Cecil Corbin Mark, Matt Shashir, and Harvey Epstein, who worked very closely with me. Ramon Martinez, thank you for helping me get here. Megan Chen, Jen Wilcox, Jeff Baker. Um, I, I also want to say I'm going to be voting no on uh, 182D. You know, traffic infractions are, uh, should be covered by this bill. I was stopped by the cops the other day while driving, and when I asked why I was being pulled over, they would not tell me why. They said they would tell me afterward, and they explained it to me when they handed me a summons for running a red light. Um, I am clear that as a white-skinned Puerto Rican woman, Council Member um, Mendez, could you bring comments would, to a close? A, a, a black man in that situation would have been um, under the danger of driving while black. Thank you, Council And it Council may have Mendes. been lethal. It wasn't for me, but this bill doesn't cover that, and that is a shame, and I Thank cannot you. vote for it. Thank Council you. Council Member Rose. Thank you. Intro 1399, the right to temporary changes in work schedule and the right to request flexible work without penalty. Unfortunately, emergencies happen to all people in all walks of life. While many New Yorkers are fortunate to have employers who understand this and make reasonable accommodations, a 2015 survey of New Yorkers revealed that 45% of respondents have no access to flexible work arrangements, and 58% of them feel uncomfortable or very uncomfortable asking for such changes. Intro 1399 would give all employees working in New York City the right to a temporary change in schedule twice a year to attend certain specific personal needs, such as family caregiving situations, family offense matters, or sexual offenses, and the right to request any other changes in schedule without risking retaliation from their employer. This bill is especially important for early career, low-income workers, nearly 70% of whom cannot change their schedule, start time, or stop time if needed. Low-wage workers, female workers, and workers of color disproportionately lack access to flexible work arrangements. No one should lose their livelihood for asking for an unpaid day to tend to an emergency, and that is what this bill ensures. The, real, the results of this bill should be positive for employees and employers alike, leading to more satisfied and productive workforce. Employees with workplace flexibility are more likely to report better overall job satisfaction, increased engagement with their job, fewer life interferences with job performance, improved physical health, improved mental health status, and a higher likelihood of remaining with their current employer. Many hours went into making this legislation, which will ultimately help improve working conditions for thousands of low-wage working women and men in New York City, a reality. I want to thank just a few of them. Annie Decker, De Deputy Director of Legislative Drafting, Terza Nassa, Alexis Weinenberg, Council Matt Member, Carlin, bring your comments to Sherry a close. Liver, yes, thank and you. my Deputy Chief of Staff. Thank you. Thank Council you. Member Lander. <clears throat> Thank Quiet you, the chambers, please. Shh. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I have the greatest respect and admiration for Councilmember Torres, and I'm a long-standing ally of both the Speaker and the Mayor, so it pains me to part ways from them on Intro 182D, but I cannot support this bill as it has been amended over the opposition of the coalition of 200 civil rights groups, community-based organizations, and advocates. Uh, who have been the champions of police reform in New York City over the past decade. 
As amended, as you've heard, the bill would not cover level one encounters or traffic stops, the majority of non-arrest interactions that people have with police officers. Where a law enforcement action is taken, there's little need for a business card. Since individuals will have the summons or be in custody, it is precisely in the interactions where no enforcement action is taken that the business card is needed, and it is too many of those that this bill exempts. As for the argument that NYPD officers would make up or needlessly elevate charges, rather than hand New Yorkers a simple business card and explain the reason for a traffic stop because their union told them to, I have much more faith in our officers than that. But perhaps even more than these substantive disagreements, my no vote today reflects a different belief on how social change happens. Real change, especially on challenging issues like police reform in a country with a deep history of racial injustice, does not happen primarily because of the bills we pass in this chamber. It happens because people who experience injustice organize, build organizations, build coalitions, build an insistent movement for justice that must be heard, and that partnerships are built between activists and legislators. Communities United for Police Reform has built a coalition like that over the past six years, which has given people a powerful way to come together to make change. Of course, they do not get to dictate what we do here. Compromises must indeed be reached, which reflect a balance of idealism and pragmatism, as we're seeing on Intro 541C, Council Member Reynoso's bill. But it is not a compromise if the entire coalition of community-based organizations, advocates, and civil rights groups who fought for it are opposed to it. And that is why, despite my high regard for Council Member Torres, I must Thank vote you. no today. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Van Bramer. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Public Advocate. I am really proud of Intro 1466, uh, a bill that uh, I have put forth and uh, that I hope my colleagues will support today. Uh, it is incredibly important that when the city of New York uh, sprays uh, pesticides, including for West Nile virus, uh, that they clean appropriately the playground equipment. Uh, and this is a matter that was brought to me by constituents uh, who were worried that their young children were uh, playing on playground equipment shortly after the city uh, sprays, but not cleaning down the equipment. So 1466 will require uh, the Parks Department in coordination with the Department of Health to clean playground equipment in city parks within 24 hours of an aerial spraying of pesticides by any city agency. Uh, there is nothing more important than keeping young people safe and making sure that parents have peace of mind when their young children are playing on playground equipment in the city of New York. So uh, I'll talk about some of the other bills later when I vote, but I certainly want to recognize uh, the importance of uh, this bill that my staff and I have worked on uh, very, very uh, hard and for a long time. So I want to thank my Chief of Staff, Matt Wallace, my Deputy Chief of Staff and Legislative Director, Andres Vija, and all of the uh, staff members uh, on the central staff who helped make this possible. Uh, so uh, with that, I say thank you, uh, and uh, we're really, really thrilled that we're going to make sure that uh, parents have peace of mind taking their children uh, to playgrounds, and that every child, including and particularly the smallest children, will be safe when doing so. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Rodriguez. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker, for all your support. As someone that, as I said before, in these past four years, I've been able to be prime or co-prime to close to 50 bills. I can say that it never happened my first time. Today, I would like to speak about intro 1658 that will require the administration to report to the council every year about the installation of sidewalk bowlers throughout the city. You know, it doesn't make sense that we have so many bowlers as they should in front of Bank of America at 6th Avenue and 42nd Street, but there's no pedestrian bowlers protecting the theaters at 42nd between 7 and 8. In the same place where the terrorists killed eight people, there were pedestrian bowlers in the other side of the street, but not in the area where the cyclists were using those lanes. So today we are voting to mandate DOT to provide every year reports to the council on where are we installing those bowlers so that we can have a better policy to plan to install bowlers in all, any areas, in any sidewalk 
that we have high volume of pedestrians and cyclists. I also would like to speak about introduction 1036-A, and I'd like to thank the public advocates for also being a partner. It will this law will require the mayor or agency designated by the mayor to conduct an annual census of vacant properties in New York City. What I hope is that New York City will be using every single vacant land to build 100% affordable housing, but we need to know where do we have those vacant lands. So, para mí es un placer estar aquí con la vocera, votando dos leyes muy importantes, crear una defensa para los peatones y crear un censo en cualquier lugar donde nosotros tenemos tierras que se pueden utilizar para construir vivienda. Thank you. Gracias. Council Member Salamanca. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, today I speak in support of Intro 182 uh, and its lead sponsor, Council Member Richie Torres, who has worked diligently to fight to bring this bill to the floor, creating what I believe will bring greater accountability from our police officers that I and many in my communities, like mine, believe is needed. I stand strongly beside my colleague, Council Member Torres, and to say that many of the unfounded attacks that have been leveraged against Council Member Torres recently regarding this bill, including from members of this body, are preposterous and shameful. No one, no one can second guess Council Member Torres' leadership as a progressive leader for the city and someone who will always stand up for the people of our beloved Bronx. Council Member Torres understands the plight of the impoverished. He understands the importance of creating positive community and police relations and needed police accountability. And finally, <coughs> certainly more than most in this chamber, he understands what it's like to be a young black and Latino man unfairly profiled just because of his color and age. So the basis attacks against Council Member Torres should not go unanswered. And the grandstanding that's happening in the, that has happened in the past few days sh should not stand in the way of incremental changes that will help thousands of New Yorkers across the city, notably those of color. Enough is enough. And with that said, I urge my colleagues to support Intro 182, sponsored by his Bronx old, my brother, Richie Torres. Thank you. Sir, that concludes general orders. Oh, Council Member Barron. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just want to speak briefly about 182D. For years, for decades, the activists, the advocates, the victims, the family of the victims who have been subjected to police brutality and organizations have indicated that there's a problem. This problem is one that the advocates brought to a representative of this body asking that person to bring their issue forward. The issue that was brought forward at that time was one that was widely supported by members in this body. Uh, when there was some resistance, there were certain members, including myself, who said, listen, this is stuck. We need to get it to the floor. And I, among others, signed for a motion to discharge for what the bill was at that time. The bill that we have now is not the bill that the persons uh, who came forward as the voice in this issue want to have on the record. And I cannot see how we can go forward and bring this bill for a vote. When we talked about uh, it was extracted from the Community Safety Act because it had not yet gotten there, we could keep it here still until we can get it to the point where it addresses and includes level one offenses, because that certainly is one of the areas where we talked about black and Latino communities being disproportionately involved in that. So based on the fact of my having been involved in these kinds of issues for more than 55 years, I think that we need to move forward in terms of making this uh, holistic and including all of that. So with that, I will not be voting in favor of this bill, and I'll have further comments when I make my vote. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. <clears throat> I just want to mention to colleagues that today we're voting on Introduction 1619, which is a bill that's going to protect runaway homeless youth in New York City. They're some of the most vulnerable New Yorkers, and during this holiday season, which is a very difficult time, for them, I want to just highlight the work that this council and this administration has done for one runaway homeless youth. This is one of the most difficult times of the year for them. 
because of familial rejection, parental rejection, the holidays is very, very difficult, and the package of bills we're passing today with Councilmember Salamanca and my bill looks to protect these young people even further. I also want to add that I am extremely proud of Councilmember Reynoso, and I am extremely proud of Councilmember Torres. I know there are disagreements, I know there is disappointment, but I also know that there is good intention on all sides here. I respect their character, I respect their integrity, and I respect how they negotiated these bills, and I look forward to voting in favor of them. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Greenfield. Thank you very much. Uh, mindful of the clock and uh, the fact I'd like to make some uh, farewell remarks later, I just wanted to uh, first uh, note that we are hopefully going to be passing 38 pieces of legislation today. We're spending a lot of time on one particular piece, but I do want to acknowledge folks have asked about that. I think deadlines are a good thing, and the end of the year was coming, and there were a lot of great things that we wanted to do, and I want to congratulate all of my colleagues who are passing bills here today, but I also wanted to thank the staff. They literally have worked night and day over the last few weeks to get all of this done and to wrangle us all. Uh, together. It was uh, uh, quite challenging over the last uh, 48 hours to be at multiple committees at once, but I think we pulled it off. And so I want to uh, thank them as well. I want to say that I, I think it's uh, great and a, a true testament to this body that we can have robust and respectful debate on issues, and I think that's what you're seeing happening here today, and I admire that. And I did just uh, want to take uh, a moment, uh, considering that I'm only going to have two minutes later, just to uh, thank my recent staff. Uh, who worked with me uh, specifically. I want to thank Danny Perlson, who was my chief of staff, Elena Sacheva, who was my counsel, Ben Siegel, my deputy chief of staff. I want to thank uh, folks who were with me in the last year, Steph Campagna and Stephen Snowder and Becky Stern and Fanny Lynn, who's my schedule, and Eva Katchi, who's my district director, and Khalid Fellner, who is a constituent services rep, and uh, Yul Schoenfeld, who does constituent services, and Dave Kinzer, who does my communications. I think all of us here recognize that uh, we're just one person, and it really is thanks to our personal staff, our district staff, and the amazing central staff that were able to get things done, and I want to just take a moment and acknowledge that. And of course, yesterday I thanked uh, the incredible land use staff that I've had the privilege of working with for the last four years as the chair as well. So thank you all, and uh, you'll hear my other two minutes in a little bit. Thank you. Any others? Seeing none? Report of special committees. None. Report of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Aging, Intro 1185A, Information to Users of Life-Sustaining Equipment. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1616A, Post-Incarceration Reentry for Older Adults. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the, com of the Committee on Civil Rights, Intro 804A, Reasonable Accommodations. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1012A, New York City Human Rights Law. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, Intro 1399A, Employee Work Schedules. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Economic Development, Intro 1615A, sub Subcontractor Guide. Amended and then coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education, Intro 1497A, Students in Temporary Housing. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1604A, Gender Pronoun Information. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, Intro 54A, City Ferries. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 717A, Idling Infractions. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 880A, Biodiesel Fuel and School Buses. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 978D, Mold Abatement. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intros 1629A and 1632A, Energy Efficiency for Certain Buildings. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1653B, Noise Complaints. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered Reso 1780, Organization Funding. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 834 and Reso 1785, Tax Exemption. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on General Welfare, Intro 572A, Shelter Census Data. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 855. 5B, public assistance eligibility. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1577A, client information management systems. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1714A, educational continuity. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1739A, domestic violence emergency shelters. Amended and coupled, and, uh, amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings. Intro 385C, indoor allergen hazards. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1009A, report of registered property owners. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1015A, housing portal. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intros 1036A and 
1039A, vacant properties. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1120A, foundation work. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1269A, community land trusts. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1419A, construction site safety violations. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the committee on land use, LU 512 and Reso 1786, affordable housing. Coupled on general orders. LU 797 and Reso 1787, tax exemption. Coupled to be filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. LU 816 and Reso 1788, property tax exemption. Coupled on general orders. LU 831 and Reso 1789, landmark designation. Coupled on general orders. LU 832 and Reso 1790 and LU 833 and Reso 1791 tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation. Intro 1466, cleaning park playground equipment. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Safety. Intro 182D, officer identification. Uh, intro 182D, I'm sorry, uh, amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 541C, consent searches. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, Intro 1499A, penalty mitigation program. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 1397A, opening of a protected street. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1658A, installation of bollards. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Youth Services, intros 1619A and 1705A, runaway youth. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar. Intro 1465A, use of residual fuel oil. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1486A, Department of Education reports. Amended and coupled on general orders. LU 828 and Reso 1768 and LU 829 and Reso 1769, property tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. LU's 800 and Reso 1792 and LU 801 and Reso 1793, Lafayette Avenue rezoning. Coupled on general orders. LU 802 and Reso 1794 through L LU 804 and Reso 1796 on the next page, 1776 East Chester Road rezoning. Coupled on general orders. LU 805 and Reso 1797 through LU 807 and Reso 1799, National Black Theater Zoning Amendment. Coupled on general orders. LU 817 and Reso 1800, self-service storage facilities. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and I ask for a roll call on a vote, roll call vote on all items on today's general order calendar. Beginning with um, Alejandro's daddy, Council Member Reynoso. Mm -hmm. I probably vote aye on all, and uh, thank you to Speaker Melissa Margarito and all our veteran colleagues. Thank Next you. Next person to vote is Councilmember Landsman. Uh, thank you. I apologize for leaving early, but I need to participate in a judicial swearing-in ceremony back in Queens. To all my departing colleagues, all the best. I especially want to thank uh, the Speaker for giving me the opportunity uh, to chair the committee that I chair, and I hope that uh, she's found our collaboration as meaningful and worthwhile as, as I have. With that, I vote aye on all, except um, intro 1419. I vote nay on that. Council Member Ballone. Thank you, Madam Advocate. I vote aye on all, with the exception of 182 and 541. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and Godspeed, everyone. Council Member Drum. I vote aye on all. Council Member Rodriguez. Aye on all. Back to the general, to the order. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. I sit here today in conflict with a vote. You know, I live walking distance to where Sean Bell was murdered. Over the years, I have come to know his parents. As a member of Community Board 12 since 2009, the first vote that I said I too was a vote to rename a street Sean Bell Way. With intro 182D, some say it goes too far, some say it doesn't go far enough. I sit here today in support of the mothers. I sit here today in support of the families who have lost loved ones. I sit here today in support of those who are stopped needlessly because of the color of their skin. And yes, I do respect my colleague. He is brilliant. But the bill doesn't go far enough for the mothers. It doesn't go far enough for the families. It doesn't go far enough for those that look like me. For that, I vote aye on all, except intro 182D, I vote no. 
Continue. Baron. Baron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Congratulations on 541C. And then as it relates to 182D, it has been substantially diminished from its original presentation at the time that I signed on to the form that it now exists and is asking to be voted on. Some people say that what's lacking can be added later. We can do this little by little. But I would quote for you what Dr. Martin Luther King said. For years, I struggled with the idea of the reform of the structure of institutions in the South. A little change here, a little change there. Now I feel quite different. I think you have, a ra you have got to have a radical reconstruction of the entire system, a revolution of values. So I'm not concerned that the culture that you might find in a police precinct is one that's motivated by love. I don't want them to be motivated by love. I want them to be constrained by the law. And I want them to follow the law. And I want our children to not, Shh, quiet, I want please. our children to not be subjected because there are still numerous stops for no reason. I see them in my community in East New York. So now we're saying that those stops that children are subjected to on a daily basis don't get the dignity. I witnessed a stop um, two years ago where the cops stopped him. And I said, why did you stop that teenager and yank him by the book bag? Oh, we were trained at the precinct that uh, we can do that and we might find some contraband or some weapons. So I say, no, I don't want to be motivated by love. I want police to be constrained by the law. And just as um, the investigatory stops don't include, the law does not include the provision for the card to be given, I think it's a major flaw. It should have been withdrawn, I think and I'm make, not making any kind of personal decisions about the sponsor or any of that, but it should have been withdrawn to make it fuller. So for that, Madam Speaker, Madam mm. Public Advocate, yes. I vote aye on all with the exception of 182D and with the exception of Land Use 512. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. I would like to wish the uh, speaker and my colleagues uh, who are departing a, a farewell and uh, good luck in the future. And uh, for those of us returning, I'm, I'm looking forward to the more conservative council that the <laughs> Honorable <laughs> Mr. Torres so vividly depicted uh, earlier today. Uh, I'll keep it short because my list of no's is quite long. Uh, Quiet in the chambers, please. I on all except 182, 541, 385, 717, 804, 1012, 1015, 1013, uh, 1039, excuse me. 1265, 1399, 1429, 1632, 1604, 1465, and land use 817, and I'll give you a list. Thank you. Shh. Con continuing on with the vote, quiet, please. Cabrera. Cabrera. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes, please, please. There's a lot of bills. We need to make sure we get the vote correct. Uh, Councilmember Borelli, I think you have a record for the no's uh, today. Um, first, I want to wish uh, the speaker and the party uh, colleagues, I uh, wish you uh, truly the best. The smiling is, uh, the future is smiling at you. Uh, you have truly served uh, this city. What a privilege, literally, to be one of the 51. I was just talking uh, to Councilmember Mealing that we truly do have uh, a position of a privilege uh, to be here and to work with you alongside with you, uh, especially if I can accentuate those in the Bronx uh, as well. Uh, Councilmember Palma, thank you for being the dean of the delegation. You led us well. Councilmember Vaca, uh, thank you for all your advice when I first came in. Uh, for all the ladies right here in the row, I'm going to truly miss you. Um, uh, you, you, your advice was uh, in your, uh, your example, and uh, all the talks and support has been amazing, and, and uh, council members on the other side uh, with uh, Dan Garatnes and, and Jalisa Ferreira uh, and, and David, David Greenfield. Just wanted to mention all because you do matter. 
uh, you do matter, and what you have done here truly matters. Um, I vote uh, no in intro 182D and intro 541C, and vote aye on the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Chin. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. First, I wanted to congratulate and thank our speaker, Melissa Mark Rivero, for a successful and historic four years as our leader in the city council. Together, this council passed more pieces of legislation than any other, many of which have made the city more progressive, more livable, and more just for all New Yorkers. Under the leadership of our finance chair, Councilmember Julissa Ferres Copeland, we have achieved a new level of transparency on our budget process. One of that has encouraged unprecedented engagement with community-based organizations that do such good work for our city. Whether it's pushing for more funding for a growing number of seniors, jobs for our youth, or critical support for caregivers, these fierce and wonderful women have shown us all what leadership looks like, and they will be missed. As I look towards the next four years as a member of this great body, I must point to the fact that we will enter the new term with fewer, member, fewer women as members, just 11 total in the city council. While I'm excited to welcome new women colleagues who are strong fighters for their communities, this city is home to more than 50% women. We must work together to ensure that women have an equal seat at the table and that the council of the greatest city in the world reflects the wonderful diversity that is its greatest strength. So and to all my departing colleagues, especially to my sister, Rosie Mendez, and all of you, thank you so much for your service to the city. It's been an honor and privilege to serve alongside all of you. And I wish all a wonderful holiday and a happy and healthy new year. Um, I have to abstain on 182D, and I will vote aye on all. Thank you. Cohen. Thank you. I'm going to vote no on 541C, and I'm going to vote yes on all other items on the general orders calendar. Thank you. Constantinidis. Madam Public Advocate, may I be allowed to briefly explain my vote? Yes. Uh, I really want to thank and congratulate our speaker and wish her well uh, for her myriad of accomplishments. Uh, when New York City is talked about as an environmental global leader, uh, it's because of her leadership. Uh, so I, I really want to thank Melissa Mark Viverito for being an environmental champion and someone who's fought to make our city greener and more sustainable. And to all my colleagues who are uh, leaving office today, it's been an honor and privilege to work with you all. Thank you for your leadership and friendship and being the great leaders of New York City. Um, and uh, I really want to thank my first boss in the city council, uh, council member Darlene Mealy, who hired me as a legislative director uh, 11 and a half years ago. Uh, and so I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to enter this body and, and uh, be, you know, work in this institution and, and give me the opportunity. So thank you very much, uh, Councilmember Mealy, for uh, the opportunity. And I wish you all the best. Thank you. Who would have knew that? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I and all. Thank you. <laughs> my apologies. Carnegie. Madam Speaker, permission to explain my vote? Yes. So to all my colleagues who I've had the pleasure of working with for the last four years in particular, and especially uh, the speaker, I thank you for the chairmanship of the small business. I just want to point out, though, that um, under your leadership, uh, I want to thank you for increasing uh, minority employment in the council uh, and sometimes doubling the numbers that we had before we came in. I think that that's important and something to look forward to building on. Um, so uh, I want to vote no on 182D, no on LU, land use 817 and Reso 1800, and I on all the rest. Thank you. Crowley. Madam Public Advocate, if I could have a minute. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, today is my last stated meeting as a New York City Council member. I want to thank the speaker for her leadership and my colleagues for their continued friendship and support. I want to thank my staff who has been so dedicated and 
has gone above and beyond to meet all the demands of the office. The last nine years have been some of the most rewarding and fulfilling of my entire life. I want to thank the communities that I represent for both believing in me and for the good work that we did together to improve our city. I remain committed to public service, and whatever the future holds, I will bring the same passion and dedication to fighting for our city that I brought to my work as a council member. Thank you uh, to you also, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. And I vote aye on all. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations to both of my colleagues who have uh, the Right to Know Act, uh, Antonio Reynoso and Richie Torres, and best of luck to all my colleagues uh, over the next four years and to those who are serving uh, their last uh, uh, year this year. Thank you. Thank you. Combo. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. I want to begin by thanking Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito as co-chair of the Women's Caucus as well as the chair of the Women's Issues Committee. You have changed the dynamics of how we see women throughout city politics. And because of you, women all over the city and this nation and the world are going to know what they can aspire to be. So for that, I thank you. You have been an incredible speaker. Your legacy is going to be one that is going to inspire people for generations to come. The Young Women's Initiative is something that I'm particularly proud of, and it's a perfect example of the way your leadership has made a difference for New Yorkers everywhere. When we talk about more women in office, this is something that we all have to champion, men and women, because our voice is so critical. And for us, four years from now, in 2021, we want to see at least 21 women sitting in these seats, and we're not going to stop until we make that happen. To the women that are leaving us, we are so proud of you. Councilmember Ferreras Copeland, you've been an incredible chair of the Finance Committee, a leader for women on the Menstrual Equality Act, incredibly progressive budgets that put women's needs front and center. As I said earlier, you taught me how to have a baby, run for office, do a land use deal, and look fabulous all at the same time. I thank you for that. Councilmember Mealy, you have been an incredible leader, labor roots, a trailblazer for women in the labor movement, coming from TWU. You took that experience into the council and fought for priorities like the living wage and prevailing wage protection for workers. You have successfully beat off challenges for the last 12 years, and for that, I celebrate you. And I am going to miss you, and I look forward to continuing to work with you. Councilmember Mendez, you have chaired the Women's Caucus, Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, and LGBT Caucus. You are a legend as it pertains to women's issues and the fight for LGBT equality. You have continued to put in safeguards such as asthma protection bill and many Council others. Councilmember, can you bring your comments to I'm a close? I'm coming to a close on these dynamic women, dynamic <laughs> public advocate, <laughs> Letitia James. Uh. <laughs> Well, keep going, honey. No. Okay. <laughs> Council Member Crowley, you have been incredible chair of no. the Women's Caucus, advocating for Council greater Member, gender please. equity at the FDNY, <laughs> and outstanding leadership on closing Rikers Island. And when you're ready to get back on the saddle, we're going to saddle up with my baby and knock doors for you. Council Member Palma. You have rose from so many challenges to become a leader representing equity, women's rights, and responsive government. Coming from a labor organizer at 1199, you are a mom, a wife, and so many things. You've been on this journey with me. You have organized workers and led walkouts over unfair working conditions. You are awesome. I proudly vote aye. And we are going to fill these seats in 2021 with dynamic women just like you. So all my sisters, I vote aye. Deutsch. Thank you. Uh, can I get four minutes too? <laughs> are you gonna Are you okay. gonna clap it up for women? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, permission to explain my vote. Sure. Permission to explain my vote. Yes, sir. <laughs> so at, at first, I was considering uh, to to vote um, in favor of uh, 182. Uh, to, for offices to distribute business cards, but at, honestly, at that time, I thought they were PBA cards. So since then, I changed my vote. Now, that's a joke. Um, 
Uh, I vote no on 182, 1604, and 541. Thank you. <laughs> Continuing. Espinal. I vote aye. We love you. <laughs> Eugene. I vote aye, except an intro 182D, I abstain. Thank you. Forever's Copeland. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, Council Member. To my parents, their unquestionable trust and faith in me made me the confident, authentic woman I am today. I thank you, Mom, your um, Mom, my desire to help others comes from you. Thank you for showing me that the most important qualities in a leader should always be compassion and empathy. To my husband, thank you for supporting me throughout the years, even when we were in different states. But guess what, baby, I'm coming home tonight. <laughs> to my son, Julian, you are my greatest achievement and my biggest inspiration. To my staff, past and present, thank you. I am who I am because of you. To our wonderful director, Latanya McKinney, four budgets, has, wasn't enough. I wish we could have had more time together. To Mayor de Blasio, we've worked together to make New York a more welcoming and progressive city, and I am proud of our accomplishments and forever grateful um, for your friendship. To our speaker, mi hermana, thank you for your leadership and support. Thank you for, your for this amazing opportunity you gave me to serve as your finance chair. To my fellow members, I have enjoyed working with each one of you and this council um, success is a result of our work together, our accomplishment together. And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. Regrets, I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption. I planned each chartered course, each careful step along the byway. And more, much more than this, I did it my way. I vote aye. <laughs> she did it my way. Gorodnik. Aye. Gentilly. May I uh, briefly explain my vote? Yes, what song are you going to sing? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say as I uh, finish uh, with my last vote that it is uh, taking me 14 years to get my diploma and graduate from the city council. <laughs> But uh, I, I've, I've done it slowly over 14 years because this is an amazing place as shown by today's meeting. This is an amazing place that does amazing things and has amazing people uh, in it, both members and staff. So I am so pleased and honored to be part of this council. Madam Speaker, thank you for your confidence in me and everything you've done for me over the years. Uh, and uh, we were together when, uh, when many others weren't in the last council, uh, uh, in the last mayoral election. Uh, but certainly, uh, I want to thank all of you, wish you the best, um, and uh, I will stay in touch. I'm not sure what I'm doing, but I'll stay in touch. And it's almost, uh, looking over 14 years, is almost as if uh, we just got started. And before you know it, comes the time to say so long. And with that, I will vote aye on all. Okay, Carol Burnett. <laughs> <laughs> Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. And certainly I want to join all of my colleagues in congratulating and wishing all the very best to all of our outgoing members, to our speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with you on so many issues of importance to every New Yorker. You and I are both graduates from the Baruch College School of Public Affairs, and you are the first to run for office, and I am the second. And you have been a role model and a champion and a woman who rocks. So it's been an honor working with you and I wish you all the best. And to all of our colleagues who are leaving, Council Members Vinnie Gentili, Darlene Mealy, Elizabeth Crowley, David Greenfield, Jimmy Vaca, Dan Garotnik, Julissa Fernandez-Copeland, Rosie Mendez, and Annabelle Palmer. 
Thank you for serving your district so well and the city of New York. I wish God speed and continued blessings to each and every one of you. Colleagues, thank you. To the members of the Public Safety Committee, it's been an honor to serve as your chair, the first woman and the first person of color. And while I am the first, I should not be the last. We have worked together on the Criminal Justice Reform Act, crisis management work, anti-gun violence, alternatives to incarceration. We have done our best to make young, black, and Latino men and women success stories and not statistics. Summer Youth All Year Round Youth Employment Program, I am so proud of this council. To my public safety team, to Deepa, to Beth, Casey, and Steve, thank you. To Ramon, to Laura, and Latanya, and all of my district office staff, I am so proud to work with you. To the Women's Caucus, what we lack in quantity, we make up in quality and I look forward to working with all of my colleagues. Congratulations to every member who has passed significant legislation today. I especially want to recognize council members Reynoso and Torres for staying true to their word, for keeping the faith and standing firm in your values and your principles. Council it is member. my honor to work with you and I vote aye on all. Happy holidays to all of my colleagues. May God bless you and keep you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Greenfield. Thank you. Happy holidays as well. Madam Public Advocate, may I have a couple of minutes to say farewell? Two. Two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will take it. <clears throat> you know, I was thinking, how do you uh, sum up eight years in two minutes? So I'm going to share a story that I, I don't think I've actually ever shared before. Fifteen years ago, my wife and I, we went on our honeymoon. We went to Italy. It was very nice. As luck would have it, uh, on Shabbos, we were staying in a hotel, and we bumped into some folks who were from Midwood in the community. And one of them came over to me, and at the time I was working behind the scenes, and one of them came over to me and said, you know, some Hefelder is going to be term limited in seven years. You should really think about running for city council. Mm -hmm. And I laughed, and I actually turned to my wife, and I was like, that's, that's ridiculous. Why would I want to do that? And I'll tell you what's interesting is we have a saying in Yiddish. It's called mensch tracht und Gott lacht, which means that man plans and God laughs. And eight years ago when I came in, if you would have told me that I was leaving in eight years, to run one of the largest Jewish charities in New York, I would have laughed as well. And the reason for that is that Ramon Martinez can tell you that when I came into the city council, I thought I was going to change the world. And I really did believe this, and I think a lot of us believe it. And what the council really taught me, and Ramon helped teach me this as well, is that it's not about changing the world, it's really about helping people. It's the people in our district, it's our friends, our neighbors, the people that we're never even going to meet. And quite frankly, it was the people in this council who I never would have met who taught me those lessons as well. When Lori Cumbo, who I've sat next to for the last four years, when she told me that she was expecting, it was like my sister that I never had was expecting. When Jalissa told me that she was leaving to spend time with her family, I was so happy for her and for Aaron and for Julian. I was really, I came to tears. When my friend Matteo told me of the loss of his father, it actually moved me and I rushed out to Staten Island to be there at the wake because I felt a closeness to him. Jemani Williams, when he lost his intestines, and God knows, I don't know how the heck he did that, but when he lost his intestines, I went to visit him in the hospital because who would I kibitz and debate with about race and policy in the members' lounge? All of this really came from the people that work here in the city council. And finally, I just want to state that Melissa taught me the value of her homeland, the value of Puerto Rico. I was proud to partner with her to raise funds for the relief effort. I didn't think we would raise over $100,000, but we did. And that was something that I learned from her as well. I want to thank all of my colleagues. I want to thank all of the amazing staff, Raju and Amy, Ramon, Joey and Joe, Latanya, Regina, Nathan and Paul, and my former chiefs of staff, Danny Pearlstein and Jane Carey. And I just want to say that Count. this is really, I'm wrapping up 10 seconds. Thank this you. is really an amazing place. The people of New York City, if they knew how much time and effort and passion and commitment and devotion that the people of this body had for the people of New York, they would be proud and I am proud as well. Thank and with you. that, I will conclude by voting no on 541C, yes on 182D, and yes on all the other items on the agenda. Thank you, and a very happy holidays, and a happy Hanukkah to my constituents who gave me this amazing opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't lose all of my intestines. Intestines, huh?
That's a new one. <laughs> ah, I lost will. about eight inches, but not all of them. I didn't lose all that will forever go down in the annals of history. <laughs> I swear, I still don't understand okay. what happened. Shh. Continuing the roll call. Grodenchik. <laughs> Madam Public Advocate. Yes, sir. May I follow my distinguished colleague from Brooklyn and explain my vote? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, to my colleagues who are leaving the council, uh, I can promise you that there is life after government and politics. I've been there. I've done it. I've come back for more. Uh, you will find that there is life after politics. It's been an honor and a pleasure to serve with each and every one of you. And Madam Speaker, I want to thank you for your many kindnesses to me personally and for your, your leadership here in this august council. To my colleague Richie Torres, your eloquence and your gentle good nature will take you very far in this life. And don't give in, never give in. Uh, to my partner in the Gorodnik Gredentia Caucus, Dan Gorodnik, <laughs> please be assured I will continue to fight the good fight for our caucus once I figure out exactly what it does. <laughs> And finally, to all, I leave you with the words of my dear Uncle Julius, a blessed memory. He was the firstborn of our family in the New World. He was a gentle soul, a teacher, a graduate of Columbia University when it was not easy for a Jewish person to get in to that school. He was also a Bronx person through and through, and a published author and a poet. His words as we approach a new year Though picking friends makes a wonderful thesis, don't overdo the job and pick them to pieces. With that, I wish you all a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and with that, I vote aye on all except intros 182D and 541C. Thank you for indulging me, Madam Public Advocate. And may I say you look absolutely marvelous up there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. He's the only one that mentioned me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling Johnson. <laughs> I want to thank public advocate Letitia James. No, I uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I, I want to um, just say the thing I'm most proud of over the last four years, and each one of us come here with our unique life experiences that brought us into the madness of running for office and serving in this body. Each one of us have faced adversities and challenges. And for me, I, I'm sitting in the same seat, I don't know if it's the exact same seat, but the same exact council seat as Tom Duane, who served in this council as the first openly gay member of this body, was the first openly HIV positive elected official in the United States of America, came out about his HIV status in 1991 at the height of the HIV and AIDS epidemic when there were no drugs and protease inhibitors, when gay men were dying in droves, when it was called GRID and not AIDS. He won in the early 90s as an openly gay, openly HIV positive man. And today I am here in the same seat as an openly gay, openly HIV positive man. I am here because of the people that came before me. Christine Quinn, and Tom Duane, and Larry Kramer, and Audre Lorde, and Michael Callan, and all the folks that laid the foundation for all of us LGBT members to be in the council today. And the thing I am most proud of is the over $40 million we have gotten to end the epidemic in New York City. Two weeks ago, the health department announced HIV, new HIV infections are at the lowest level ever recorded in the history of HIV and AIDS. And Melissa Mark Viverito deserves an enormous amount of credit. She has been a champion, a staunch ally, and a supporter to the HIV and AIDS community. And to me, when I have come to her on these issues, I am proud of her speakership, and I am proud of all the members that I have served with. Happy holidays, and I vote aye on all. Kalos. Permission to take us into double overtime after five? Yes. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> on the Right to Know Act, I'm an attorney, and the Fourth Amendment matters to me. I carry it in my pocket 
along with the Bill of Rights. And uh, on a purely academic level, it's interesting that folks would want to protect the Fifth Amendment with Miranda rights because we see it on TV where the Fifth Amendment provides no such protections. And the Fourth Amendment, which is arguably stronger, uh, doesn't. And uh, that is just from an academic level why this package is so important. The next piece is just if you grow up in the city of New York, as I did, and you go to high school in the Bronx, as I did, you're going to get stopped and searched against your consent. Uh, and that, that is just a lived experience for myself and so very many New Yorkers. And it's part of why I fought so very hard for this legislation, uh, both with my colleagues asking folks to sign on to the bill and being fairly forceful with the sponsors about being aggressive as possible to make sure we got it done. Uh, I've received all sorts of pushback, uh, including from the mayor's office, but I continue to stand strong for it. And after everything we've done, it would be hard uh, to v vote against it. I understand that there is a lot left to do, and I'm committed to getting it done next year. I also just wanted to take a moment to say that some people say they're progressives, uh, but some people actually act like it. And that is Melissa Mark Rivarito, who passed rule ref rules reforms and actually followed them, eliminated Lulu's, made the body full time. It's been member driven where places, people who are independent like me are able to still get things done. Time and time again, the speaker has stood up for residents over special interests and the big question has always been, is this good policy? No one is like you, Melissa, and no one will be able to replace you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. <clears throat> King. Just want to say congratulations to everyone who's passed legislation over the last four years and done all they've done to improve the lives of all of us here in the city of New York. It's been a pleasure. And congratulations to all of those who are starting a new chapter in their lives. And I will be voting yes on all and abstaining from 1604 AM 182. Cool. Uh, Madam Public Advocate, I will save my remarks for, for future meetings. <laughs> I will eye on all except 541. Shh. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for that. Thank you. And I want to wish everyone a happy holidays, uh, all the council members and all the central staff and all the... Happy holidays to you. And well. everyone, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Koslowitz. Thank you. May I please be excused to explain my vote? I yes, Councilmember. I want to thank our speaker, Melissa Mark Beverito, for the last four years on a great job. I also look forward to seeing the public advocates for the next four years facing us during council meetings. Oh, thank you. I also <laughs> want to address my colleagues who are leaving who are term limited. I know what it feels like to be term limited. But four years from now, you can return. <laughs> I waited eight, but here I am, and I have another four years. So to all of you, good luck. And as I walk out the door in four years, I look forward to seeing some of you walk in the door in four years. Thank you and have a great holiday. Thank you. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. To Annabelle, Dan, Darlene, David, Jimmy, Julissa, Liz, Rosie, and Vinny, I have learned from you, been inspired by you, argued with you, had you hang plastic bags on my door uh, with nothing in them, to be clear, the rumors that they contain Jumani's intestines are entirely false, um, and grown a lot from working with you. Uh, really deepest thanks for uh, our friendships which have grown and for your service to our city, which has been uh, powerful. Melissa, it has been an extraordinary privilege to serve in this council under your speakership. Thanks in very large part to your leadership. We are on a path to close Rikers. We are setting the model nationally for what a sanctuary city looks like. 
for a right to counsel for low-income tenants facing eviction, for fair work week for fast food and retail workers, protections against freelancers, against getting stiffed, the largest participatory budgeting program in North America, except for Paris, and we're going to catch them. Uh, comprehensive rules reform that have made the body more fair, effective, and transparent in a way that has served us extraordinarily well this term, and I believe will carry us strongly into the future. Unlike some others, I hope it's an even more progressive council next term, but whatever comes next, this one has been extraordinary. Thank you. With that, I vote aye on all, with the exception of intro 182D, on which I vote no. Thank you. <clears throat> Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Thank you. <laughs> Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, I want to also acknowledge uh, our great colleagues who are leaving the council, uh, this being their last stated meeting. Uh, Darlene Mealy, uh, who is one of the most extraordinary negotiators that I know, uh, who has done such an amazing job uh, for her constituents um, over these last 12 years. Uh, Darlene, uh, congratulations. I wish you all the best. Jimmy Vaca, uh, who has brought so much joy to this job. Um, I, I know of nobody else that um, takes whatever uh, that he's working on uh, with that it occupies, it could be the most, whatever it is, it's the most important thing. And, and Jimmy, uh, you've just been an inspiration to everybody that's worked with you. Dan Garodnik uh, is such a, a wealth of ideas and has uh, taken um, uh, every issue uh, with uh, plumbing the depths to make sure uh, that this city is working for every single resident of New York City. Uh, David Greenfield, uh, who is one of the most brilliant people I've had the uh, opportunity to serve with, uh, David Greenfield has, uh, is always striving to make sure uh, that, uh, that everybody gets the services that they deserve. Um, Julissa Ferreras Copeland led this finance committee and this amazing finance staff through four of the most progressive budgets that this city has ever seen and maybe will ever see. So, Julissa, thank you. Rosie Mendez, uh, Rosie, you have been like a big sister to me since before I was a council member. I think you'll continue to be a, a, like a big sister to me. Um, and uh, just your commitment, even just in the last couple of days, uh, to the, the legislation that you've advanced over the years has been totally inspiring. Thank you. Uh, Liz Crowley, uh, who is amazingly courageous and took stands uh, that may have cost her politically, but have, uh, have, ha will, will stand the test of time as major courageous stands. Uh, thank you, Liz. Vinnie Gentili, whose love of Brooklyn has been evident every single day that he has been in this job. Thank you, Vinnie. Annabelle Palma, who really is the heart and soul of this council. And Annabelle, uh, since I first met you, you have continued to be an inspiration. I wish you all the luck in the future. I can't wait to work with you when you're with the administration, um, but really, truly the heart and soul of this council. And last, last but not least, uh, Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, who has been such an amazing steward of this body. Uh, and uh, as an institution, we have grown and become more democratic and stronger under your leadership. And I want to thank you and wish you all the best. And with that, I vote aye on all. Happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. Uh, Madam Public Advocate, permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes. All right. Why are we voting aye on all today, including intro? Shh. Please. Thank you. Uh, including intro 182. And I have to say that the uh, remarks offered by Councilmember Torres earlier were the most uh, eloquent and powerful I've heard on the floor of this body. And I want to thank him for a bill which will help thousands of constituents in my district and New Yorkers around the city ensure that their rights are protected um, in the midst of encounters with police. Um, I'm just so proud of what this body has accomplished over the past four years under the leadership of our incredible speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, whose rock-solid commitment to social and economic justice never wavered, who made this term the most productive in history, and whose openness and fairness made this an incredible time to be a council member. And I want to thank the other nine colleagues whose last stated is today. Um, unlike Lori, if it's okay, I'm gonna have pity on the men and include them as well. And I'll start with Dan and thank him for being an unfailingly, unfailingly thoughtful and insightful voice. Uh, thank you, Rosie, for your passion and for your fearlessness. Thank you, David, for applying your searing intellect to the cause of making this city a better place. 
and for destroying the low-carb diet of all of us on every Jewish holiday. Thank you, Vinny, for never being afraid to fight for the causes you believe in. Thank you, Annabelle, for your commitment to the people so often left behind in this city. Thank you, Julissa, for being an inspiring model of a strong and passionate and effective leader. Thank you, Darlene, for your friendship, for your inspiring life story, and for nurturing young Costa Constantinides into the great leader that he is today. Thank you, Elizabeth, for never backing down from a fight, no matter the odds. And thank you, Jimmy, for never hesitating to say the one thing everyone else in this room was thinking, but didn't have the guts to say. I will miss all of you terribly, and I look forward to many years of friendship and partnership with you, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Maisel. Uh, in favor of all except uh, no on 182D and 541C. Thank you. Mealy. May I explain my vote? Yes. I just want to vote um, no on intro 182D, I on all. I just want to thank all my previous um, co-leaders of the Brooklyn delegation, Martin DeLon, Public Advocate Tish James, thank you. David Greenfield, Carlos Machaco, and the one I must say, Mark Traeger, for supporting me even when I'm not here or here and giving me the encouragement to go further, I want to thank you so much. And I want to thank Annabelle Palmer for keeping me off the edge at times. <laughs> so I just want to thank all Mark Viverito for all that she has done as our speaker. I want to thank the Women's Caucus, Lori Cumbo, fearless woman. I want to thank Elizabeth Crawley, who was my co-leader in our um, Women's Caucus. I want to thank Helen Rosenthal for doing, passing the torch on to us. And I want to thank all the ladies in this caucus, um, Karen Coswitz, Annabelle Palmer, Debbie Rose, Rosie Martinez, uh, Margaret Chen, Inez Barron, Warrior, our she warrior. I want to thank um, Vanessa Gibson, Bronx, for all that you do. And I just want to let everyone know, I must say, being an elected official, I never in my wildest dreams thought I would become an elected official. Sometimes I even pinch myself, only by the goodness of God that I am here today. And I am glad that I'm not a politician. I am a servant of the people. And I thank Costa Constantinini for all that he has done with hiring, we have to go back and reach back and bring young people into this body. Because we need new vision, we need new strong vision for this and not all conservative. I want to thank um, all the things I've done in Brownsville, Imagination Playground, the second in the world, the historic land use of um, Stone Avenue Library, the first children library in the world in Brownsville. And I want to thank all the things I've done in Brevoort State of the Art. And one thing I want all my colleagues who are leaving to know, my motto is, the best is yet to come. And I'm Councilwoman Darlene Neely. <laughs> thank you, Councilmember. Um, please be mindful that we still have two resolutions to vote for. For those who are leaving, we, st we need to meet, maintain a quorum. And to our public advocate. Thank you so much, council member. <clears throat> Menchaka. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito uh, and her entire staff for the work that we've done together. Uh, the work that we've done around Sanctuary Cities out of the beautiful honor of being the chair of the Immigration Committee has been uh, something I'll never forget. Um, I don't think that we'll have this kind of alignment uh, when you include uh, our incredible finance chair, Julissa Ferreras Copeland. When we three got together and decided that something was going to happen, it happened. From adult literacy at the highest levels uh, we've seen in recent history uh, of a $12 million initiative to really commit to our adults who need education, uh, to the incredible public defender program, Knife Up. Uh, we, we did it. 
we did it together, and I cannot wait uh, to continue to do that in, in that spirit in the next term. Uh, thank you to all the members who are termed out for your incredible service to this community. Uh, you have left a wake uh, for us, and all of you, uh, from the speaker to, to all the members, uh, will leave us uh, with a lot uh, to do for this next term. Um, but we have done a lot already, and I want to say that one of the things that I'm lifting up today is the concept of participatory democracy. Uh, when we put our people in our districts first, beautiful things happen. This, these last four budgets have been passed with a lot more in the millions of dollars of participatory budgeting projects, the, m the most we've ever seen, and I hope we can continue to grow that. Each of these projects mean that somebody in our community was connected to it. And also legislation, legislation that was born and grown out of our districts is important to me because those people who are right now thinking about the work uh, that is important in their neighborhood, on their block, in their schools, uh, will one day become future council members and we will have an incredible diverse, especially with more women in this council. Um, and so I wanna thank uh, Richie Torres and Antonio Reynoso who have pushed this work together um, uh, in the Right to Know Act but I will be voting no on 182D uh, and I on the rest. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mendez. Thank you. Um, I'd like to say a few thank yous. I want to say when I first entered the council, there were 21 women. We're going to be going down to 11. Uh, but also with my departure, we uh, now will have no out lesbians in the council. Um, in order to uh, summarize my 12 years, all I want to do is say thank you to my staff. I am only as good as you are. Th and I have to say their names. Thank you, Vanessa Diaz-Lopez, Lisa Kaplan, Sheila Rodriguez, Greg Geller, Chris Labarge, Jasmine Torres, Carlina Rivera, Matt Vigiano, Aura Olivaria, Irak Sahansky, Gisela Galvez Milan, Jasmine Askew, Michael Schweinsberg, Alicia Martin, Trisha Ramsharit, Georgina Chris, John Fout, Dario Quinzek, Jorge Jimenez, Michelle Berger, Rosemary Diaz, Victoria Herbis, Kate McCulliak, Jessica Nopamiache, and Barbara Sherman. Thank you for your years of service to Council District 2. I want to thank the BLA caucus staff that I worked with, Alex Rias, Chioma Ahakam, and Susana Davis, and my then public housing committee staff, Bob Aham and Ben Goodman. Um, Thank you is not enough for your service to my district, to my community, and to this city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosie. <laughs> Councilmember Mendez, how do you vote? Thank you. I'd like to vote no on 182D and yes on all the rest. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. Palma. Madam Public Advocate, permission to explain my vote? Yes. I want to take this moment to recognize um, all my colleagues, former and current, who I um, have had the privilege and, and honor to serve with. You all have been a uh, wealth of knowledge, um, support, your compassion, and, and your commitment, and the commitment that you bring to this body has always inspired me and has always made this job a little bit easier to do. Um, I want to thank um, my the staff that I've had, Team Palmas. So I'd like to refer to them. Um, my former chief of staff has joined me here today, and I, um, Mariela Salazar, I want to thank her for taking time out to come to what is now my last day to council meeting as a member. But my entire staff, Adi, Tanya, um, Jason, Kenny, Cherie, without you guys, we are not able to do the work that we do. Um, Ramon, I think you and I met 12 years ago. Well, not I think, I know we met 12 years ago under um, very distressed situation. <laughs> and I, I want to say that the friendship that we have um, developed, I will take with me for the rest of my life and, and you will forever be part of my life and forever be part of someone that I will call for advice um, when I see myself in a certain situation. The Bronx delegation has been on my support system in the Bronx. I thank each and every one of the members um, that have served with me previously and, and today. 
Um, Vanessa, thank you for always stepping in when I needed someone um, to, to co-chair, to chair the, the meeting for me. You've never hesitated, um, as any of the members did. Richie, stay gold, stay strong. Um, I am so proud of you today um, for the pieces of legislation that you're voting, but most proud for your stance, for not letting anybody rock your foundation, and for knowing that at the end of the day, when you go to sleep today, your conscience will be clear in knowing that you did the right thing. You make me proud, my brother. And lastly, I just want to say thank you to my um, loving husband who's here with me for being my rock, for being most of all my sounding board when a lot of things in this place didn't go the way I thought they would. You, were, you was there to give me a sound voice. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you to the people of District 18 who had the courage um, to, and I say courage, and I don't mean that lightly, the courage to elect me four times to the city council. I thank you for the privilege. Thank you. I vote aye. Excellent. Perkins. Madam Public Advocate and to my colleagues, it's great to be back at the City Council. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to vote aye on all, uh, with the exception of uh, intro 182D. I vote Thank you. no. Thank you. <clears throat> Richards. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Oh, all right, I will not be long, but I, I just want to uh, pick up where I left off in saying that, you know, I, we're having a debate about giving a card to people who are, who are, who are stopped. And I don't think uh, that this is earth shattering. I, think, I have faith in our police department uh, and the men and women uh, in the police department that they would be able to give people a card. We're not talking about anything earth shattering. Um, so with that, I vote no on 182. Uh, I also want to give a ton of credit to Councilmember Richie Torres, who I, I call uh, the Donovan Richards of the Bronx. Um, because he's endured an immense amount of attacks from both allies and enemies alike, while he's worked uh, honestly, honestly and diligently to negotiate the best bill he could deliver uh, for the residents of New York City. And I want to add in, in the statement in and say, may we save our attacks for the very system that resists reforms and not our allies in the struggle. Um, I'll move on and say we're passing uh, self-storage today, which has certainly been overlooked, they, uh, 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 some work around that. I want to thank uh, all of the individuals who, who worked on this issue, Industrial Jobs Coalition, Raju Mann, Brian Paul, and all of our colleagues in the, uh, who worked in the IBZ Coalition, uh, ANHD. Uh, we are making good on our first promise in the Industrial Action Plan by preserving good paying jobs for high skilled workers who are mostly from communities of color that have a lack of access to high paying job opportunities or adequate education. Uh, and one of the uh, best parts about this as well is that we are also empowering members to have more control over the projects that get built in their districts. Uh, so with that being said, I vote aye on everything else except 182. Thank you. Thank you. Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. I've always supported comprehensive police reform that protects the civil rights of all New Yorkers while ensuring that the public is safe and that police officers can do their jobs effectively. These are common goals shared by almost all New Yorkers, and I believe today's right to consent bill brings us closer to these goals. The final version of intro 182D, however, is not something I can vote for today. While I support its principles and its intentions of support of the sponsors, after close reading of the bill and conversations with constituents and advocates, I believe it is better to start this conversation anew in the next term. I look forward to continuing to work with my colleagues toward our shared goal of public safety and civil rights for all. I want to commend Council Member Torres for his tenacity and courage. And my vote today is not personal, it's emotional. Um, I cannot in all good conscience vote for this, being the home district of the death of Eric Garner and it still hasn't been resolved. So um, I'd like to also say it's been an honor and privilege to having, ser to having served with my departing colleagues. I want to thank you all for making this the most productive council in the city council history. 
and to Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito. You have left an indelible blueprint, and I will miss you. And with that, I vote aye on all except intro 182D. Thank you. Rosenthal. Hang on. Uh, I proudly vote aye on all. Uh, Madam, speak, uh, Madam Public Advocate, can I explain my vote? Yes. Okay. Um, listen, I, I respect those in my district who have called asking me to vote no on 182D, but I am very proud to stand with uh, Councilmember Torres um, and thank him for all of his hard work and the work that he's done, I believe, to move the ball forward. I think that your analysis of the situation is spot on. I think you have the long view in mind. I think that um, what this will do is begin to uh, uh, make the PD feel very comfortable about what you're asking them to do. And uh, with much admiration for getting the administration on board, um, and as you say, much admiration to the speaker for starting the negotiations in good faith. Um, I'm just, uh, I learn from you every day, colleague. And, um, you know, your wisdom, uh, I think, will uh, prevail in this one. And I thank you for that. I, it's so sad to see my female colleagues go. Yes, my male colleagues too, but mostly my female colleagues. Um, learned from all of you and, um, you know, hope that some of you run for office again in 2021, just move somewhere else or something. Come back, you've been incredibly inspirational and especially, of course, to uh, Council Member Melissa ba Mark Viverito, who's been an extraordinary speaker and has set the bar high for whichever male uh, follows her. Thank you so much. <laughs> Salamanca. I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Torres. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Um, I'm going to miss all of my colleagues who are leaving, but I, I, I do want to know that I would not be where I am today, but for Council Member Jimmy Vaca, who is one of the most uh, honorable and decent public servants. I know, Jimmy, I'm speaking about you. Um, I want to be here to listen to this. Even when, even when he disagrees with you, he has a way of disarming people with his sense of humor. Mm. The Jimmy Vaca Comedy Hour is the highlight of leadership meetings. And there's no public servant to whom I owe a greater debt than Council Member Jimmy Vaca. The first campaign for which I ever worked was Jimmy Vaca's 2005 campaign for the City Council. The first legislative office in which I ever worked was the office of Council Member Jimmy Vaca. The first speech I ever gave was delivered at Jimmy Vaca's inauguration, 2006. I was an anxious 16-year-old speaking in front of 700 people. To say that Jimmy has had a profound influence on my life is an understatement. He has dedicated nearly four decades of his life to public service. He spent 26 years as a district manager for Community Board 10 in the East Bronx, and then 12 years in the New York City Council. And as a district manager, he was such a force of nature that he earned a profile in the New York Times. The title of the New York Times article reads, James Vaca, the King of Clean. The article begins with the following passage. Spotting an abandoned car on a Palom Bay side street, James Vacca stomps on the brake, whips out a pen, and scribbles the location and license number on a takeout take menu. Later, driving slowly through a housing project in Throg's Neck, his normally cheerful face looks chagrined as he sees candy wrappers and newspaper flutter along the sidewalks. But, Jimmy Vacca, the district manager of Community Board, quickly assures the passenger, my streets are 90% clean. <laughs> the article continues. Not too long ago, he says, he saw a man toss a cup from a car. Mr. Vaca tapped on the window and hurled the car cup back inside. <laughs> Excuse me, you've lost something. That moment is vintage Vaca. If I can have just 30 sure. more. Early in the week, I was touring the Urban Assembly School for Wildlife Conservation where the tragic stabbing took place. 
And toward the end of the tour, the principal asked me, how did you enter politics? And I replied, I actually went into politics at the urging of my high school principal, Robert Leader, who at the time was the longest serving principal in the public school system. The principal then said, Robert Leader is a legend. And I replied, Robert Leader introduced me to then district manager and now council member Jimmy Vaca. And that principal said, Jimmy Vaca is another legend. And it struck me at that very moment how blessed I have been, how blessed my life has been by the guidance and generosity of legendary public servants from Robert Leader to Jimmy Vaca. Jimmy, I will miss you dearly. I love you like family. And I will forever be proud to be an alumnus in the Jimmy Vaca School of Public Service. Mm. Thank you for serving the city of New York. And thank you for mentoring those of us who proudly carry your mantle long after your service in this body. Thank you, Jimmy. Continuing on with roll call, Jimmy Mack. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I definitely. I, yeah, <laughs> I want to be clear. I, de I might be the deciding vote, so I definitely vote <laughs> for all, including intro 182D. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Traeger. Why do I have to follow Richie Torres? <laughs> Rules reform change. <laughs> Public advocate, may I please be uh, excused to explain my vote? Yes. I'd like to congratulate all of my colleagues who are passing bills today and to extend my gratitude to Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, who led us through an incredibly productive council session, a leadership on immigrant rights, including uh, expanding language access and improving police community relations, has made an indelible mark on our city. She also helped create the Recovery and Resiliency Committee, and some folks questioned what could that committee do. Well, thanks to my speaker, and my colleague, Richie Torres, who had the first hearing ever in a NYCHA complex in Coney Island, we secured $3 billion for NYCHA from FEMA. That is a victory we can all be very, very proud of. I'd like to particularly also congratulate Council Members Richie Torres and Antonio Reynoso on the passage of the Right to Know Act, which constitutes a significant step forward in further professionalizing and restructuring encounters between police and civilians. I am grateful to Councilmember Reynoso for working with me to strengthen the language access requirements in the bill to ensure that the right to know is universal, regardless of English language proficiency. I'm equally grateful to Councilmember Richie Torres, whose steady advocacy convinced me of the pressing importance of these reforms. And while I appreciate many advocates' concerns about the scope of 182, including advocates for victims of sexual harassment and assault, I firmly believe that this bill is a step in the right direction towards increasing transparency in police encounters. As with many of our efforts to undo systemic issues in our society, which were built up over decades, these bills are imperfect, but they are not the end of this body's dedication to criminal justice reform. In this council, in, in this council and in the previous council, we as a body have been committed to pursuing criminal justice reform. In the next council, I'm confident that we'll continue to engage in serious dialogue about the issues of public safety, that we'll work to implement innovative policies that advance justice and equality for New Yorkers. I just want to also give a shout out to some of the members who are leaving. Uh, my dynamic colleagues, Rosie Mendez, Dan Gorotnik, uh, our, our awesome dynamic speaker who, uh, who's, had, who's had my back, Councilman Jimmy Vaca, Councilman Annabelle Palma, who is so compassionate has a heart of gold, and has the best recipe for sofrito anywhere in New York. <laughs> counts, counts the chair of the Finance Com Committee, Joseph Ferreras Copeland, who's been so supportive, including helping get Teachers' Choice to record levels. My, co my courageous colleague, Elizabeth Crowley. My awesome co-chair of the Brooklyn delegation, Darlene Mealy. And my, my, my colleague, my, my neighboring colleagues, actually both of my neighbors, Vinnie Gentile and David Greenfield, are both leaving. But I'm still here in Southern Brooklyn with Heimdorch. Uh, with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Public Advocate. Ulrich. Okay, let's get this show on the road. I'm voting yes <laughs> on everything except intro 1182D, 385C, 541C, and 1399A. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And a happy and a healthy new year to everyone. Thank you very much. All right.
Vac, <clears throat> excuse me, Vaca. Okay. Shh. Quiet in the chambers, please. We're still in session. Is that? Councilmember Vaca. Yes. Thank you. If, uh, I can explain my vote. May um, we have quiet in the chambers, please? Shh. It's very hard to um, fully uh, respond or fully uh, appreciate. Councilman Torres' statement and his faith in me. Uh, I have been lucky over my life, and um, I have to thank my staff. I have to thank my daughter. I thank my daughter so much. Um, for 12 years, I've had great people, and I've tried to mentor them, and they've achieved fantastic heights, all of them. We've worked together. And we have disagreed, and we have, I've encouraged that, and we've learned all together. And seeing my staff grow has meant the world to me. Hearing Richie Torres speak today was an amazing moment of pride. And that I've made a contribution to that is just overwhelming to me. I want to thank everybody here. You know I love you all, and I do. I say that from my heart. I love you all. I'm in awe of this institution. I've been involved in government, as Richie said. I don't know how many of you know these stories. I've been involved since I'm 12 years old. I, I came to the steps because I was in the eighth grade at junior high school 101, and the buses never came, so I went to an anti-MTA demonstration <laughs> on the steps of City Hall. And I most, times take the, I most times take the train here today, and I want you to know that not all demonstrations were successful <laughs> because we still have fighting to do, and I realize that very much. But boy, do I value this institution. We have such a great body. We have a chamber that every time I walk in here, I know I'm privileged. I'm a kid from the Bronx. I, I grew up in modest, modest me, with parents of modest means who did the world for me. And I've, I, I've loved giving back. I give back when these people work in my office and they don't know where to go and they think that Jimmy Vacca knows where to get them. I'm so honored by that. I love them when they yell at me, I hug them. And I tell them it's going to be okay. And that has been my reward in life. So God bless you all. I'm not going anywhere and I'm going to be involved somehow. And, and I know that uh, my life will continue to be full. So, God bless. Um, I do, Richie, I love you, but I, I do vote no on 182. I do vote no on 182D and 541 and 717 as well. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Jimmy Mack, we're going to miss him. Williams. May I excuse me, my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, just to finish my uh, speech I was giving before, the advocates got us here. Uh, they're the reason that many of us are in leadership. And so to cast them aside how now doesn't really make particular sense. When I was listening to uh, the speeches on the speaker route, I heard many people say that movements are created not by elected officials, but by advocates, by activists, yet we're pushing them aside. Every advocacy group, all of them, CPR, NAN, NAACP, legal groups, black and Latino law enforcement organizations, everyone, not just the crazy lefts, but everyone uh, who helped bring us here, all the people we go to for cover, all the people we've asked for advice are against a 182. Most importantly, the families of the movement, the people who have lost people, like Nicole Bell's and uh, Sean Bell's mom, Eric Garner's uh, mother, Romali Graham's mother, and Anthony Bias's mother, Darwin Small's sister and family, all of them, including the youth that was spoken about today, have asked us to vote no, not in opposition to Richie Torres, who I believe is very sincere, and I congratulate what he did today, not take away that sincerity, but so that when the tape is replayed, we can stay, we stood with them when they stood with us. And that was what I wanted to complete. Uh, I do want to say, um, just in the eight years I've been here, 
I'm allowed to call a lot of things, generally not dishonest and generally not disrespectful. Um, I have never been cut off. Uh, that was my most, dis I felt the most disrespected in the eight years that I've been here, simply because I followed the rules and I have never pushed forward when asked not to, but there seemed to be a mismatch in what the rules were here and who was allowed to speak further and who wasn't, depending on what was uh, folks wanted to hear say. So I felt personally disrespected. I am proud, however, to say that I've been led uh, by women in this body, um, particularly the public advocate, uh, Madam Speaker, the finance chair, who all made history, and I would never do anything uh, to disrespect any one of you. I think it's a great day when we can look at this body and say we've accomplished so much uh, in the years we've been here and we've been led uh, by women. Even though I have nudged in places, when you come in the bird's eye view, under the leadership that was present here, I think we've moved the city in the right direction. Uh, with that, I am going to vote aye on all, with the exception of 182D, where I vote no, and land use 802, 803, 804, and accompanying resos, where I abstain. Thank you. Matteo. Madam Public Advocate, may I have excuse to explain my vote? Yes. Um, to my good friend Richie, Richie, you pulled out all the stops today, but um, you're not going to convince Jimmy. You were certainly uh, not going to convince me. <laughs> um, I want to begin uh, by wishing my uh, colleagues uh, who are leaving all the best. Uh, I've been in this building for quite some time as a staffer and now as a, uh, an elected official. Um, you have all have a certain uh, warm place in my heart. Um, to, uh, I, I do want to mention uh, to the speaker, um, we certainly uh, don't agree on a lot. Okay, we don't agree on much. Um, but we have worked well together on the things that we can agree w with, and uh, we've passed some good pieces of legislation together. I thank you for that. I thank you for your friendship. I wish you nothing but the best. Um, to my good friend, uh, David Greenfield, on my left, um, you have been uh, a great confidant and friend, and... Um, during my toughest time this year with my dad, you, you certainly were there. And I'll never forget that, and uh, I wish you nothing but the best. Uh, I think Mark Levine talked about Jimmy Vaca and, and what he says here. You should see him in leadership. Um, he really, uh, we're going to miss you on leadership in BNT. Jimmy, you have been uh, such a great council member, such a great friend to me. Um, you're going to do great in anything that you do. Uh, please... Um, Make sure that you keep in touch with all of us, and uh, we love you. To the rest of my colleagues, uh, we wish you nothing but the best. Um, I do want to thank um, all of my colleagues for, for it was a tough year for me, and uh, you were all there on a, on a personal and uh, on, on a friendship level, and I thank you for that. Um, back to business, I have a lot of no votes. I'm going to vote no on 182D, 385C, 541C. 717A, 804A, 1012A, 1015A, 1039A, 1269A, 1399A, 1419A, 1465A, 1604A, 1629A, 1632A, land use 817, and Reso, 18, uh, and Reso 1800. So with that, um, I would vote yes on the rest. Wish everybody Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, um, a safe and happy uh, New Year, and I will see the rest of my colleagues uh, in January. Thank you. Continuing. Van Bramer. Permission to explain my vote. Yes. So uh, I wasn't expecting to say these remarks when I got up this morning, but I have to tell you that when I got up, I was incredibly torn about uh, this vote. Uh, but watching Richie Torres today at the pre-stated press conference reminded me of something that I've been thinking a lot about. And that is during the speaker debates over the last couple of months, I've heard Corey Johnson talk about his depression as a young man. I've heard Richie Torres talk about his depression uh, as a young man. I too have talked about that. And I've sat there some of those nights and remarking to myself how awful the homophobia uh, that drove these three young men uh, to uh, those places. Uh, and as I watched Richie today at the pre-stated press conference defend himself, uh, defend his positions, 
uh, I very much identified uh, with that young gay man uh, who was trying to do something uh, that he thought was right and that he thought was best, where there were lots of people uh, pushing incredibly hard on him, forcefully, in some cases unfairly, because I believe that Councilmember Torres wants the best result here uh, and wants justice. Uh, and I thought, where am I, uh, a much older gay man who's seen a lot more uh, in this? Uh, let me be clear, the bill is not all that I wish it was, and I wish it went further. Uh, but I want to stand with Council Member Torres, and I want to speak uh, in favor uh, of this piece of legislation, which is not all that we need, but that is a step forward. And while it is frustrating to some, I am not going to join the chorus of those attacking this young man. Uh, I want to support this today, support him today, and then hope we can all come back and do something even more profound in the next council. So with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Speaker Mark Viverito. So again, as we are uh, taking our, our final votes for this session, I again just want to extend the deepest appreciation um, to all of the staff here and at my district office. Um, I'm very happy that we're joined by Diana Ayala, who will be succeeding me to represent District 8, someone that um, I believe in, I um, reached out to, I me I've mentored, and thankfully she's got the same way I'm hearing the story of the power of mentorship of Richie with Jimmy, the importance of us taking the time to invest in the future generations and in the next, um, the next generation of leadership. I have to say that today um, I've been extremely proud I think that today has been a defining moment for my colleague, Councilmember Torres. I've seen a level of um, courage that uh, is exemplary. This is what, to me, leadership is about. That is what our job as legislators is, that we evaluate, we are pushed, yes, by advocates. We are pushed by our experiences. But we look at a lens, a wider lens, when we have to make decisions in this body. Um, and he took a tough decision, and he knew, he knew that he was going to get knocked. And as many have mentioned, unfairly so. Anyone that would try to question his integrity or his reasons for arriving at that choice um, really should do some self-reflection. This is a young man who truly and passionately believes in what it is that he stands up for, what he chooses to do, what direction he decides to take. And I'm proud um, of him today because I have seen a level of maturity also um, in being able to understand that it's not about going with which way the wind goes. It's about being principled in your decision, understanding that you may still be criticized. So I'm uh, really, really proud today in everything that's been said. And Richie, I consider you a friend. I hope you can consider me a friend and a mentor. I can always be available to you um, and be a partner to you in all that we do. And uh, again, I've tried to lead this body in the most collegial way, and we are not going to agree every single time. I hope that when we close this chapter here today uh, that we can all fondly look at the work that we've accomplished and fondly look at the direction that we've taken this council in. And um, I have no regrets. And I, again, uh, thank you all as we uh, take our final vote. And I know we have some other matters here, but the uh, final vote, which I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you. I, too, want to. Uh Recognize and congratulate council, member, council members Torres and Reynosa. They are both profiles in courage. And I want to thank the speaker and all of the members of the council for allowing me to chair this body. It's been an honor and a privilege. 
and I too want to say uh, not goodbye, uh, but I'm sh confident that I will see them again. The speaker, Melissa Marco Council Member Miller, uh, um, Mealy, Gentili, Greenfield, Garodnik, uh, Ferraris, Copeland, Vaca, Crowley, Mendez, and Palma. When one door closes, another door will certainly open. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative. Zero negative and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 182D, which was adopted by a vote of 27 in the affirmative. I'm not finished. <laughs> 27 in the affirmative. I got six pages. 27 in the affirmative, 20 negative, and three abstentions. And intro 541C, which was adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative, 13 negative, and zero abstentions. And, uh, uh, I'm not finished, I'm not finished. Silencio, thank you. And intro 385C, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 1419A, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. And land use 512 and resolution 1786, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, one negative and zero abstentions. And land use 817 and resolution 1800. We are still in session. We're still in session, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, three negative and zero abstentions. And intro 717A, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, three negative and zero abstentions. And intro 804A, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions. Quiet in the chambers, please. And intro, 10, and intro 1012A, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions. And intro 1015A, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions. And intro 1039A, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions. And intro 1269A, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions. And intro 1399A, which was adopted by a, a vote of 47 in the affirmative, three negative and zero abstentions. And intro 1465A, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions. And 1604A, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, three negative and one, up and one abstention. And intro... And intro 1629A, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions. And land use 802, 803, 804, an accompanying resolution, which was adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero abstentions and one, zero negative and one abstention, excuse me. Um, and that concludes the tally for today's vote. All items, we still have resolutions to vote for. Can we please have quiet in the chambers? <laughs> what did you say? I think that's it. Introduction and reading of bills. For what it's worth, I don't know how far to go. Hold on. Uh, all items have been referred to committee as indicated on the agenda. <laughs> We're still in session. We still have resolutions. If you're exiting, please exit quietly. The first resolution is Resolution 792A, a resolution establish, establishing January 30th annually as Fred T. Karamatsu Day of Civil Liberties and the Constitution. Seeing no speakers, all of those in favor say aye. aye. All of those opposed? Any abstention? The ayes have, you, have it. And Resolution 1484A, a resolution denouncing the termination shh, a resolution denouncing the termination of the DACA program and calling the state and federal government to extend protections for undocumented youth by passing the New York State Dream Act of 2017 as well as the Federal Dream Act of 2017 and the speaker, the first speaker on that resolution will be Councilmember Menchaca. We are still in session. Shh. Quiet in the chambers as we now hear from Councilmember Menchaca. Thank you so much, uh, Public Advocate James. Uh, this has been a long year resistance in action, and I'm proud that our accomplishments have been so, of so many in our city. 
And I stand in solidarity with all the dreamers of New York City and of our nation. Congress must pass a Clean Dream Act before the end of the year. The dreamers, which include business leaders and uh, all those who are supporting, like elected officials and immigration advocates, we heard from you yesterday on the steps of City Hall, and dem you've demonstrated how dreamers mean how much they mean to us and our communities. New York City has consistently demonstrated its full commitment to protecting immigrants. We passed legislation and set policies that force the city agencies to protect personal data of all New Yorkers, empowered our Department of Education to keep ICE away from our school children, prohibited ICE agents from entering many city-owned buildings and properties, and funded legal services, adult literacy programs, mental health, and job service immigrants. I say pass a clean act Clean Dream Act now in Congress, in the federal government, and also pass the New York State Dream Act of 2017. Justice must be served. Thank you. Thank you. S seeing no other speakers, all of those in favor of Resolution 1484A say aye. aye. All of those opposed, any abstention? The ayes have it. And general discussion, and the only sp oh, two speakers, Council Member Jumani Williams, whose mother is in the balcony. My mother's in Grenada. She was there. No, but she's in Grenada. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know I'm taking my time. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, just so the advocates were here, we should be um, oh, proud. I do congratulate Richie Torres, but we got a long way on this in, very, in just a few days, so no one should leave here with their heads hung high. As I said, I do want to say I'm proud of uh, the leadership that I was allowed because of this speaker proud of uh, being a housing chair. We got a lot done. Uh, obviously, I always think that we can get more, but on a bird's eye view, uh, we did a lot. And I want to say thank you to Council Members Mendez, who was the first elected official to endorse me against an incumbent, so I'm always so proud to have her. Ferris Copeland, Garadnik, Vaca, Palmer, Greenfield, Mealy, Gentili, Crowley, and the Speaker. Uh, and I, it's just been a, a, an incredible time uh, with these folks. I really believe we've moved the needle forward. I want to thank the housing and building staff. Uh, including Megan Chen, Jose Conde, Ed Atkin, Jen Wilcox, Sarah Gasolin, and, form and formerly Guillermo Patino. Also, thank you, Ramon Martinez, uh, uh, for helping move uh, so many things. And I, I think I helped push him sometimes. And Nick Smith, who was stolen from me, uh, the mayor's office. I am chasing some big dreams, uh, but I don't know where I'll be uh, uh, when I come back. But I, I really think in this Housing and Buildings Committee, we did a fantastic job. Um, look, uh, King disagreed with Malcolm, who disagreed with Farmer, who disagreed with Hamer, who disagreed with Randolph, who disagreed with King. They all were moving in the right direction. Uh, tomorrow is another day. There will always be time for discussion. There will always be time for debate. Uh, when we come back next session, I know we'll be ready uh, to move forward in the legacies that we were able to do today. Uh, and I say thank you all. God bless everyone. See you on the flip side. Council Member Mendez. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. When thanking all of my current and former staff, I left out uh, someone that the office always calls the favorite, my current director of communications, John Blasco. So I apologize, John. And I'm going to take the moment to thank Annabelle Palma and Felix for letting me officiate their wedding. And to my sister, Margaret Chin, and my brother, Dan Garotnik, thank you for being more than colleagues and always being there for me. And thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. And I would be remiss if not to give my regards and my sympathy to the former Assembly Member Roger Green on the loss of his mother, Theopia Green, as well as the Kirkland family. And um, Council Mem what? No. Oh, Traeger. <laughs> Thank you, Public Advocate. Public Advocate, I, I rise today as well. Our city needs more common sense legislation. I'm proud to work with my colleagues, uh, Council Member Adams and, and Levine, on legislation intro 1836 to build positive police community relations. Today, I've introduced a bill that would make sure all of our police precincts have social workers stationed at, at the precinct 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Police precincts don't have the resources to help individuals with their social-emotional needs. This bill would help make sure that no one's needs would fall through the cracks. Uh, my bill, again, uh, co-sponsored by Councilmember Adams and Levine, would also provide valuable resources to police precincts that allow officers to focus more on energy and on law enforcement rather than untangling complex social issues and navigating bureaucracy. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and very happy and blessed. Uh, uh, happy Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Festivus, and Happy Healthy New Year to my colleagues. Thank, thank you. you. And continue to pray for Councilmember Dominic Recchia with the loss of his mother as well. And Council Speaker for the very 
your very last comments as the speaker of this city council. Quiet in the chambers. We are adjourned. For the speaker, Melissa for a final Mark time. Viverito. Wow, thank you all. And we are adjourned. <laughs>